Three billion human lives ended on July 25, 2003. The survivors of the nuclear fire called the Cataclysm Judgment Day, or J-Day, not to be confused with a similar event known as T-Day, which was a very different natural disaster that also ended 3 billion lives when super tsunamis covered the earth, but I digress. Humanity lived only to face a new nightmare, the war against the Terminator's TM. The computer which controlled the machines, Job, rang every single phone in the world as its battle cry and sent two Terminators back through time. Their mission, to destroy the leader of the human resistance, John Connor, my son. The first Terminator, Daniel Baldwin, was programmed to strike at me in the year 2019, before John was born. It failed. The second was set to strike at John himself when he was still a child. As before, the resistance was able to send a lone warrior, a protector for John, a Cybo man if you will. It was just a question of which one of them would reach him first. The future, always so clear to me, has become like an empty bucket of chunky chicken at night. We are in uncharted territory now, making up history as we go along, just like John Hurt would want us to. billion people died on judgment day they sure did it's inevitable you know apparently only in some timelines though joe let's be real some <sighs> it's, it, it's not some it is i can't believe we're talking about terminator yeah on this show i didn't think we were going to be doing any of the films on this let alone like anything from the franchise let alone just like terminator in general what's that I'm here from the future. I know. Don't ask. Don't ask how I'm here. It's fine, okay? Listen, Dark Fate took a shit at the box office. It's hideous. There's blood and guts and dead bodies everywhere. Give me back my pants! Uh, no, okay? Anyway. We need to go watch the only movie in this series that has done anything different in six films. It's funny you say that, because... We did. As a matter of fact, we did. Oh. Y you arrived right in time, actually. We're recording it right now, Connor. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I'll just stick around then. I get, well, my time travel uh, uh, accuracy is not good. Did you hear the episode already? No. It's a few. The ter robots killed everything. I don't have a computer in the future. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Connor, did you get your technology from fucking Daniel Baldwin? Is that why you're a little <laughs> late to the uh, show? We're talking Terminator salvation today. This is also why I'm a skeleton, because time travel ripped off all of my skin. It turns out that even if you have an organic covering, you'll still die. Oh, you're fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, according to Daniel Baldwin, you'll also lose all of your hair, too. Yeah. Daniel Baldwin has a thick layer of blubber protecting him from such, <laughs> some, such temporal anomalies. Oh, man. If nobody knows what the fuck we're talking about, you have to go listen to Season 1, Episode 4, Yesterday's Target, to get the full Baldwin Terminator effect, because he's dropping, like, bombs in this fucking episode. Yeah, the uh, the, the deep, deep, deep uh, MDU lore. You're going to have to time travel back and listen to all these fucking episodes that have accumulated to this episode episode and the timelines have switched it they have changed it's all at the derangement the d the delighted derangement of john hurt fucking with everything fucking with terminator fucking with arnold fucking with daniel baldwin fucking with christian bale yeah fucking christian bale hard yeah but then christian bale just yelled at him and then john hurt left him alone forever <sighs> he sure did he kept fucking with those lights oh good for you and how was it? I hope it was fucking good because it's useless now, isn't it? Oh, Terminator Salvation, by the way, is the film we're talking about today. Yes. Yes. Season 2, Episode 30, Terminator Salvation. That is what's kicking on the fucking MD today. So I, I couldn't just go watch this film by itself, right? Dark Fate has just come out. What are we, a week fresh on that? More or less. I thought it'd been out for a long time so because uh, Gears of War 5 came out and fucking Sarah Connor and the fucking Terminator in that game. What? So, uh... 
I've been waiting a long ass time now. Mortal Kombat 11 too. Oh God. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 11 has uh, Sonya get a, uh, a Sarah Connor outfit, and Kano has he he gets like a Terminator cosplay outfit that just turns him into a robot. Oh. Okay. I guess the Terminator people just went all out with the fucking marketing this year. And, uh, you know, Gears of War and Mortal Kombat paid the fucking price. The blood money, if you will. Terminator's in Mortal Kombat 11 and he's broken and not fun. <laughs> um, because he was rushed out to fucking try to cop on the fucking uh, promotion of this film. <laughs> and, you know, we'll get to it later about this series as a whole. Um, but I just couldn't, I couldn't watch Salvation by itself, right? I said, I gotta watch all the fucking Terminator films, at least up to this point. Um, I made it to Dark Fate, I only watched about 30 minutes of it, but we, we'll talk about that soon. Just real quick, I wanna recap these, these movies. Um, one is a fucking classic, yes. two is, is, is a monumental, uh, special effects achievement, and it's just a fantastic film. Oh, it's one of the best movies ever made. Two still looks just, like, utterly flawless, too. Like, those special effects have aged beautifully. I could not believe how good everything looked and held up. It was amazing. It looked better than some of the CG that I've seen lately. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it does. And I was like, holy shit. And some of that stuff was, like, groundbreaking for the time. Yeah, no, it was groundbreaking. Like Stan that... Winston was fucking bringing it, Joe. Yeah, Stan Winston brought it fucking hard. Um, P.S., all of the um, all of the little bursts on on um, Robert Patrick when he's two thousand when they're shooting him with like handgun and shit, all those little ones on his chest where it's not CG are practical and those things bloom open. Whoa, damn! Yeah, I've seen the mechanic that this. I forgot the name of the special effects technician that came up with it, but it was fucking so cool. I was like, that's amazing. Um, but yeah, so the first film is so gritty and like dark and and I think that whole tone for that film makes it out to be more of a horror film for some people i'm one of them sure and it but it is sci-fi horror right yeah, just like yeah, predator yeah. or alien or anything like that like those franchises and kind of terminator predator and alien go hand in hand yeah you know, together and like robocop and i would say a good a good companion to terminator being a little more horror than expected is like Mark 13 hardware. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um that's a great flick, dude. But yeah, the the that film was just amazing by itself. Now we get to the second film. Now we get to the second film and we've kind of switched gears there, right? Now it's a little bit brighter. I mean, it's still atmospheric too. Yeah. We've kind of shifted from that horror element and went full out action. Yeah. Very set PC. Very set PC, but there are some very tense moments in the second film. Oh, yeah. The T-1000 scary as shit. Robert Patrick is fucking phenomenal as the T-1000. Uh, he's just equal amounts... Cre Here's the thing, too, right? So, Arnold is very good at, you know, being blank and being a robot, but so is Robert Patrick. Yeah. And I feel like we, we lose a lot of that, especially going into the, the next sequel and, and the next few sequels, actually. Well, you talk about, like, super intense scenes, and I always think of the scene in 2 where uh, Sarah Connor's attacking fucking Miles Dyson at his house. Oh, my God, dude, that's... And it's just like, holy shit, the fucking wife's screaming, the kid's, like, trying to protect him while she's got this shotgun in his face. Yeah, she's fucking... She's got a gun pointed at this little kid, like, get the fuck out of the way because I'm going to kill your dad. Yeah. Um, um, it's very a lot of it's very intense the whole the whole film dude and then like right after that Arnold literally like cuts his fucking arm open and rips his skin off to reveal a Terminator arm. I love that so, scene it's, he's, it's so he's good. standing there with his bloody ass arm and he's like listen to me very carefully <laughs> the other thing with T2 is there has it has that mild element of comedy but it's never so in your face that you kind of notice it right you know what i mean you're not rolling your eyes you're not like no. jesus fucking christ can we get on with it like there's little things there's really no jokes it's more like there's things that happen that are funny but no one's no one's mugging towards the camera there's stuff with Edward furlong who plays john connor in that film who is just you know he's he's working with the robot to try to humanize him right and you know of course that shit's been parodied for the last 30 years with him saying hasta la vista baby and the thumbs up and all that shit sure and it's kind of corny but it totally makes sense like i watched the the super deluxe extended edition that has like everything intact for t2 I, i've never seen that so that looks like i have to it's perfect it it bridges everything together it wraps it all up with a nice beautiful fucking bow and you have terminator 1 and terminator 2 and that's the end of the story and it's great it should be yeah 
And then some fucking asshole went and said, you know what? We need Terminator 3. Fucking set it up, baby. We're making fucking talk to the fucking hand jokes. Oh, <sighs> boy. We, we were talking about this a little bit before we recorded about how in the original cut of Terminator 2, it actually ends super definitively yeah. where Judgment Day doesn't come. Sarah Connor's like sitting in the park where in the actual movie she's like blown away like in her mind that fucking nuke scene Mm -hmm. I had nightmares about that fucking scene for years (laughs) it's fucking scary dude she's there and she's like older she's got like older makeup on which is believe it or not she kind of looks exactly like she looks now it's it's a little creepy and it's good makeup too I've heard people say that it looks like shit and it looks great the the fucking war against the machines is over we we live to you know go on and have peace and uh, John Connor's even there pushing his fucking kid on a swing. Whereas, you know, obviously the theatrical cut, if you've seen it, kind of ends ambiguous like the first film where her and John are just kind of going down the road and they don't really know what the future holds for them. No, she has her f- famous fate, fate line. And then, uh, like Joe said, that cigar chomping executive fucking got their uh, money grubbing hands involved. <sighs> the third film in this franchise should have been Salvation. Or Salvation-esque. You know, it should have been that future war, right? Agreed. Uh, I said it in our chat, but I'll say it in the show. I've never watched this movie all the way through because every attempt has been either, like, I start watching it, I don't like it, or I catch it somewhere uh, on TV and I still don't like it, so... And that's usually maybe it's like a half an hour in at some point. So I've never saw this. I've never seen this film all the way through. I don't particularly care to. Uh, Listen, Joe's going to probably break it down for us. But the only thing I remember positively about this film was there's this big hard chase in the beginning. That's kind of cool. And uh, you know what? I saw it with my dad. I saw Terminator in the fucking theaters. And, you know, other than that, I could... uh could have done without it yeah but like that's the that's the that's the whole thing right everybody's like but i saw that with my dad and i've seen a few people say that i didn't see it with my dad but i did go see it um and it was cool at the time because you know all i wanted was oh there's arnold and it's yeah there's robot shit (laughs) right right but but like i don't know when you examine it now uh, as like a film it kind of shits on the end of two it shits all over the series in general in my opinion like I'm not I'm I'm not going to pick it up completely apart here, but I do want to say that like I don't need to see drug addict John Connor. No. And like the way that Skynet becomes aware is so fucking stupid and is facilitated by another Terminator, the Terminatrix, the TX. Uh she facilitates uh Judgment Day. She is directly responsible for it. Terminator 1 ends, and, you know, the reason why T2 works is because, okay, we stopped the Terminator, Sarah Connor destroyed it, but she left it in that factory, and, you know, Cyberdyne was able to get the arm and the fucking, you know, chip inside and, you know, reverse engineer it for 2. Right, right. But the end of 2, it's totally destroyed. Arnold even goes into that fucking molten uh, liquid just so that there's no chance that it could be replicated. So as far as we know, Judgment Day can't happen because the Terminator technology no longer exists. So how the fuck in 3 does this thing even come back in time? I don't know. Uh, I can't even really remember if they give a good reason. I'm sure somebody's going to be like, they fucking did this for blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, it's fu- whatever it is, it's stupid. I guarantee you. The series time travel rules have become so... Like bloated and nonsensical and there's like 15 divergent timelines and yeah. some are canon, some are not and now a bunch of movies aren't canon. It's it's just so convoluted at this point. I could almost buy it if it was like, listen, they can only send back so many Terminators because it uses this very specific uh, material to send people back in time or Terminators back in time, but you don't even get that. Right, so... Moving on to, I'm gonna just skip over Salvation real quick because we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that for the episode, but I want to get. I want to move to Genesis real fast. <laughs> oh, pro tip: just watch the first five minutes. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Genesis isn't a poorly made film. It's competent. No, the effects are cool. The effects are good. The CG is good. The writing is actually pretty good, but the the story is terrible. Um, whereas T3 like. Everything's bad. The acting, the fucking script, and the story is just shit. It's garbage. This is kind of like it's trying something different, and it kind of works, but I think they made a mistake 
by there's just too much fucking time hopping in it. There's also like that movie is so willing to just fall on the sword of Terminator Two, uh, and the first one. Like it's everything. Yeah. This kind of I was gonna bring this up later, uh, but um, there's a very big problem with Hollywood and that system right now with uh them thinking that nostalgia is just it just equals quality. Um, but there's a lot of pandering, and Genesis is so much fucking pandering. It's um, a ton of it, dude. Yeah. It, most of the plot is pandering. Like, we're going to go revisit this, and revisit this, and revisit this, and revisit this. Dude, like, the coolest part to me, and I'll admit this, like, maybe I sound a little bit like a hypocrite, but I like the idea of, oh, shit, like, there's a Terminator unit that got sent back to protect Sarah Connor when she was a baby. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's kind of cool. And and I like the idea that it takes out the T-800 in the fucking first five, ten minutes. Like, that's kind of cool. Kind of. But beyond that, I'm kind of good. Well, who's like a robot fight? Exactly. And I think that's a problem <laughs> because it's like, who wants another fucking robot fight? And they're cool. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that they're not because they are cool. But why? Right. It's the, I just kept scratching my head this whole film and like, Okay, this is stupid. And then, like, John Con, like, Kyle Reese is his own fucking grandpa, and fucking John Connor is a fucking bad guy who grew up to facilitate cy- not Cyberdyne, the other fucking thing. Skynet. Not even Skynet. Like, it's, uh, Genesis. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> or right, some yeah. shit. Yeah, doesn't he get, like, taken over by a Terminator that, like, infects him with nano machines or some bullshit? Yeah, like, right. So he sends Kyle Reese back to 84, and then he's in- he's a immediately infected by Skynet the thing, which is actually Genesis. Let me tell you how all right, so I'm a big Doctor Who fan. So when I heard Matt Smith was gonna be in this, I was like, yes, right? here it is. Here's this big fucking break. And then you see him for like four seconds in the first five minutes when he puts his hand over John Connor's face and then shows up as a hologram at the end. He's literally in the film for approximately three minutes. Oh. I think that's being generous. And then let me guess, at the end, Arnold sacrifices himself like he does in every other movie. Sure does, but guess what? <laughs> he kills robot... Listen to, listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> he kills robot John Connor in a version of the time machine that brought the original Terminator and Kyle Reese to 1984. And then he walks off. He like Kyle Reese talks to himself in present day or he talks to a. I don't even know who the fuck the kid is. I think the kid is supposed to be him. And he's like, okay, when, when when Genesis comes online or whatever, you gotta stop the shit. And then he, like, walks off into the distance with Sarah Connor and the T-800 Arnold, who is now old, who has been rebuilt because he jumped into a thing of T-1000 goo and was fixed or whatever. Sure. And then they just drive off. And they're like, we still got a bunch of questions that need to be answered, but we're not going to do that. Bye. It's Terminator. You don't care, right? Yeah. It, man, right, that's audience? the problem. Right? And most people don't, at least from what I've been reading and seeing. They're like, I don't give a fuck. Where's Arnold? Where's the robot shit? <laughs> And I'm like, this is stupid, though. Why are Dude, we like throwing money at this anymore? I like Arnold a lot. Like, he's a super good, like, action movie star, and he is the Terminator. But, like, those fucking Terminator models stand on their own. Like, you don't need Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's, it's like I run into people every now and then who will not watch, let's say, oh, the big one is Fury Road because Mel Gibson's not in it. I'm like, you can't. Let's not stay. That's stupid. Stupid. You want Mel Gibson post Passion of the Christ and all those anti-Semitic rants? Yeah. That's who you want in your film? Yeah. Oh, it's not the original actor? Man, I'm like, the original actor is like 60. We stop. Yeah, let's let's do Ghost Dad 2 and bring Bill Cosby back. Like, give me a fucking break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's that. Yeah, there's a problematic nature of uh, recasting him, but also his age. And, like, Arnold's, yeah. this, Arnold's just moving past his franchise. Like, he, he's got the he's got the Hogan hips when he walks around in these fucking late movies where he's, yeah. he's fucking <laughs> stiff and you can tell he's ancient. Just, I can't get the idea out of my head of how many different ways they can explain away why the Terminator is aging. They address this in Genesis, too. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah, but it's also just kind of like, I expect that because... It's living tissue on top of. Uh, okay, fine. So it ages. You know what I mean? Straight up. And I'm, but I, that's sure. <laughs> that's the least of my fucking problems. No, but yeah, like that's right. fine. You could, you can fucking, you can sci-fi fucking nonsense me all you want with that. That's fine. My problem is, 
your fucking story sucks. For me, that movie breaks in half after Sarah saves Kyle and she explains all of the, the, the timeline bullshit. Yeah. And she's like, in 1980, blah, 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 blah. And then even even Kyle Reese's character, uh, Jai Courtney's over there like, hold on, slow down. I don't know what, nope, start over. <laughs> and then Terminator just, and Arnold's just feeding you shit like, again, in the year 2025 or whatever, some shit happens and then whatever's. Is he for the fucking robot from Aqua Teen? In the future, in the year, in the, fa- in the past. <laughs> you two must mate. You have to fuck Kyle Reese. That's why I'm here. Let's do it. Fuck in front of me now. And, like, you just run around the whole movie, like, with somebody, like, wouldn't that be cool if, like, we did, like, part one where it's Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese, but they don't know each other, but they're both badasses, and they're fucking fighting a Terminator? And guess who the Terminator is? John Connor. Whoa. Mind blown. Oh, alternate timeline. Who could give a fucking shit? I don't need a what-if comic book movie. Thank you. It's like you don't know these characters, but you know them. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because everything that you've know that you know about them is completely different for this film. And it's so much shit to retcon and cram in and create new that it's just like your fucking head spins. And by the time it's over, you're like, what the fuck just happened? But at least it was cool robot fights or whatever. Yeah, it's a movie that I feel like we uh wouldn't even waste our time doing for this show. It's 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 really just an aside for salvation, just to kind of make a point. Yeah, and it's really long. <laughs> yeah, well, not only that, but like we didn't. Obviously, we're not going to do one and two because we don't. There's nothing that needs to be said about those films. They're on the shelf. That's it. Done. They're on the fucking shelf. Dunzo. I'm not doing fucking Terminator Three just because. I don't want to sit there for an hour talking about this garbage fucking movie or Genesis for that matter, trying to explain the goddamn timeline. Um. I want to round out the base with Dark Fate. Now, I, again, like I just mentioned, like I only watched about 30 minutes of it. Um, it, it seems fine. Like, it's shot well. It's acted well, at least from what I saw. I didn't really get into any major story beats. Like, I only met the new uh, time-traveling human cyborg and, like, the new Terminator, and then, like, Sarah Connor came into the picture. Oh, they're in Gears of War 5, too. It's only, uh, 1999. You know, you gotta, you gotta spend that 20 bucks to get Grace in the new Terminator unit. Ugh. Out now. The- Gears of War, TM. This, sh- this show is being paid for by, uh, Epic Games. I wish. <laughs> you, you know what? I'll take that paycheck, Connor. Yeah, seriously. I'll tell you all about your fucking shitty Terminator thing. We're gonna get the Diet Pepsi and the Diet Coke from fucking Demonic Toys. We're gonna get Dark fate from fucking this one. Buy chunky chicken. Don't forget the roll with the honey. I can't let you take the man's roll, son. Hand over your chicken and your biscuit and the honey. He, he's he's gonna come up a bunch in this discussion, don't worry. Oh, oh yeah, well, Charnetsky's a fucking big role in part two, or T2. Dark Fate, uh, died box office, box office opening weekend. It made $29 million, the franchise low, and it seems like nobody gives a shit about Terminator anymore. Yeah, well, I think you said it best, Connor, like, it's not that the movie, from what I saw, okay, so I can't sit here and say that Dark Fate's a good movie or a bad movie. What I saw was competently made, it, and it was cool from what I saw, but, like, it's just fatigue because uh, the story's yeah. been over. Like, it's been over since 1991. The story has been over, right? Well, and the, and the thing is, too, like, Genesis actually made a decent amount of money. I think, like, the box office was, like, $480 million or some shit. Because Arnold, because T2, because T1, because those things were yeah. parts of that. But I feel like the people that were still in, like, in on Terminator at the time were, like, felt so burned. They were just like, all right, I was still, like, one of those people that was in on this shit, and now I am out. So, like, who's left at that point? Right? And, like... It just got so goddamn silly. I just don't know why they just don't make a new franchise with a similar concept if they're just going to keep remaking them. Spend money on new ideas, please. That would be great. Part of the problem, I think, is this this franchise keeps getting hot potato to different owners. Like, uh, Salvation was distributed and like put out by some company called Halcyon, which I don't think is around anymore. Oh, really? Genesis was put out by a different company, and then someone else put out Dark Fate. So the three fucking reboots have all been done by three separate sets of people. And I don't mean separate sets of people as in, like, just different humans, like, different entities altogether, different bunches of people, different corporate entities. So, yeah, Dark Fate, uh, Terminator Fatigue, don't fucking need it. No thanks. It, it's, it, it looks cool, but I just, I don't know. I don't need it. I even watched the fucking T2 ride 
as a part of this. Yeah, T2 <laughs> <the rewatch. laughs> Tri- Battle Across Time? Sign me the fuck up for that. Saw that live twice. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to make an addendum to that. <laughs> to, to T2 should have stopped at T... Or Terminator should have stopped at T2. Should have stopped after Battle Across Time. And then we just cap it off. We're good. Um, but today... We are finally, (laughs) after all of that, we are talking about (laughs) Terminator Salvation from 2009, directed by Mick G. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I can't. Did, does he call himself Mick G? Like, does he walk up to you and pronounce, like, introduce himself as Mick G? Because that's douchey. Is he, like, Prince? Hey, you know what? Listen, this guy did direct, and I didn't see either of these movies, but I know people enjoy them. The fucking Charlie's Angels movies from about 10 years ago with uh, Drew Barrymore, and I think it was a Cameron Diaz was in those movies. Sure. Oh, you mean the one we're getting the fucking another reboot of? Another reboot of, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we need that. Even though we have two of those, we need another one. He's He is a competent director and I think he does a really good job in this film. We also have Shane Hurl- but doing the cinematography in this, who I follow extensively for, like, indie f- filmmaking shit, and wow, one of the coolest things about this movie is that it feels independent, because I'm pretty sure it was, right? Yeah, uh, yes, actually, I did read More that or less. At, at the time yeah. it came out, it was one of the most expensive independent films ever made. And But it feels like it, because they give a shit right there is more tone and atmosphere that's another thing there's like t3 was so devoid of atmosphere and tone and it was just kind of all over the place shitty sci-fi-esque garbage and then in this film we're right back in it like this is a fucking drama and it's really good and um it's just oozing fucking atmosphere and tone which is great. McGee had the cast read The Road and something else for this movie for an idea of what the, like, you know, the attitude of the whole world and everything like that. I think they captured the fucking, the post-apocalyptic world pretty fucking well. Oh, it's juicy. I love it. <laughs> right? Um, I think it's really good. I think it's done really, really well. The color palette works so that just, that, that fucking, the, 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 the blasted out grays and uh, all the, yeah. the tan and rust. But it's never like, it's never, it never has that ugly ass fucking blue, like, tinge to it yeah it's very i know i can't believe i'm saying this but it's It's not rain of fire no this sounds ridiculous but it's a very lush uh, um (laughs) post-apocalyptic movie and that just means that it's just not all gray nothing like there's 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 contrast you know what i mean there's color contrast there right and it's you know i say it's not like rain of fire but uh you know not because bales and both but uh you know we talked about (laughs) with that film how it was all grayed out the entire film until like that last fucking scene (laughs) until the final shot yeah well yeah exactly and then terminator salvation started right he he beat the dragons and then and then the and then the war on the machines happened he's like oh shit i forgot about the robots (laughs) oops oops robots versus dragons Uh, sign me up for that what's really weird here uh uh, we have John Rosengrant doing effects. For, he's the head guy doing effects on this film. So there are people in... Uh, Connor, you mentioned to me this was Stan Winston's last film. Stan Winston died during the filming of this. This is this is actually the last movie he ever worked on. And it's dedicated to him. Is it really? Um, I miss that. There are... Sp- specific people from the Stan Winston Studios and the rest are under this guy John Rosengrant. He is he is credited with the effects for this movie. So I feel like Stan might have been a consultant on this because there's definitely people f- Oh maybe. There's definitely people from Stan Winston Studios working on this film, but I don't think it was a Stan Winston Studios production. Right. And the reason I say that is because the robots are very cool in this but they're not Stan Winston cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, all right. I mean, the effects are fucking phenomenal. No, they're great, but, like, especially when we start talking about, you know, the half-dressed fucking uh, uh, Blaine uh, minigun-toting weird guys in suits things, which I'm totally on board with, but it's just not Stan Winston. The, the T-600s, if you will? Yeah, yes, the T-600s, yes. Also, real quick, Danny Elfman is doing the score for this film. Danny Elfman delivering a score that I really liked. <laughs> it's fine. It's pretty good. Um, also, what I noticed is, like, we've totally disregarded the first two themes from T1 and T2 for favor of whatever else, especially in, in T3, they did the same thing. I mean, you have that classic da 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 but, like, yeah. the rest of the theme isn't there. But for this film, yeah, I mean, you get it, but it's very, it's, it's, it's sparse. But I think Danny did a great job with this for being 
its own standalone soundtrack because the rest of the soundtrack for T3 I think sucks. There's a lot of cool renditions of the Terminator like hook in this movie. Yes. Uh, specifically one that is just an acoustic guitar while someone's kind of out wandering in the open wastes. It, it yes. works so well. And it's fucking cool, man. And it's, yeah. I didn't ever think like my, my brain was like processing it. I'm like, I never even think to kind of interpret it that way. Yeah. With like that acoustic guitar or that kind of tonality of it. I always think of like metal clanging and the fucking heavy, mm. you know, da, 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 you know, I, I kind of love, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this because I had some choice words about Sam Worthington in our Clash of the Titans review. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't suck here. No, he's he's actually, I feel like, really good in this film, and I, I really like his character arc. Yes. Which, for people, if you remember, when this film was coming out, the marketing kind of, like, spoiled the big twist in this fucking film. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it did. And I, for... I don't know how I missed this or I just don't remember. I don't remember being spoiled about it. There are, there are about three or four instances in that trailer where they show what Marcus is without showing you everything, but they give it away. Oh, they sure do. Spoilers, he's a fucking Terminator unit. He's like an infiltrator Terminator, and he doesn't know it. He's the first prototype of what becomes the T-800 where it has the cybernet, yeah. where, where you know it has the Arnold skin and all that. The ratio of machine to human isn't quite clear, but he's just human enough to retain free will, but also just robotic enough to pack a serious punch and take some damage. Right. Exactly. He's the definition of a cyborg. Yeah. He straight up, he is like th- he is a cyborg, right? Um, but. Skynet quickly learns that you can't put a human brain and a human heart in a machine and have it be obedient. Yeah. Skynet, by the way, in this film, being represented by Helen Bottom Carter, who plays this... Uh, oh, man. I guess she has cancer or something, but she's like a doctor or a scientist that works for Skynet. She works for she works for a separate company that gets bought by Cyberdyne, which becomes Skynet. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it becomes like their genetics division. Okay, okay. So her company facilitates the fa- the knowledge, <laughs> I think, to make a cyborg in general, and then when Skynet becomes aware, it uses that information to create a synthetic human, not a human, but like a, you know, a Terminator that has the, the um, you know, better to hunt us because we see a human. Right, right. But Sam's character, this this character Marcus, is in, on death row, he's about to be executed. Yeah. And Bottom Carter is trying to convince him to sign over his body to science. She wants his body for science, and he's like, it's gonna cost you a kiss. And he has this great line, he says, so... I guess that's what uh, death tastes like. Yeah, it's fucking bone chilling. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's supposed to set up Marcus as kind of a piece of shit. Because uh, he's in, he is in prison for murder. He got two cops and his brother killed. I'm assuming in some kind of robbery or something. But he also says that he doesn't deserve a second chance. Because she's like, oh, we'll give you a second chance or whatever with your, your body and science. And he's like, I killed two cops and my brother like, I don't deserve a second chance, right? Yeah, I think he knows he's kind of, he's he's immoral, um, mm. but probably at this point understands what he did was wrong, but has some rough edges. Also, take whatever you want for a kiss for, from HBC, man. Sign me up for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that woman. <laughs> My God. She's totally okay with it, too. He signs the paperwork right, o- right after. Oh, yeah. And, like, was the implication there, like, did he just do that in a spur-of-the-moment thing, or did they actually know each other? It looks like she kept coming to try to convince him. I love this whole preamble thing, because, uh, by the way, it's 2003 right now. Yeah. So, Terminator 3 is out right now in theaters. <laughs> But we're not talking about that. Is it, like that's when he gets executed. It's in two thousand and three. That's when he get. Yeah, yeah. What do you? That's my. That's my last request. I want to see the new Terminator film. And then he watches it, and then fucking blows his own brains out. He's like, "Give me the needle. I'll do it myself." <laughs> Just give me the gun. I'll do it myself. Talk to the hand. Good lord. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but it's it's so okay. Yeah, so so we're in two thousand three, and we're in this is the you know the jail where the, where where uh, Sam Worthington is kept. His name's Marcus Marcus Wright. Yes, because we're gonna we're about to jump around, right? Because D Day or T or Judgment Day is nineteen ninety seven. J Day, man. J Day, brother. T Day is actually a different event that happened in the MDU. That's when the uh, Titanic two uh, was impacted by icebergs and the entire world was flooded. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I forgot. I forgot. That was the alternate timeline. Different event. Um. Wait a second. I just realized that this is two thousand three, and Judgment Day was supposed to be nineteen ninety seven. Well, when was Judgment Day? 
in T3 because I might be going off of that. I think it was right around the same time. It happens like that year. You could argue that J- Judgment Day uh, in this instance of the timeline is probably about to occur. It, it's I think it's like right before this. I'm almost positive. Yeah, I think they, I think they like loosely take ideas from three. They don't ever like directly reference it, but there's a couple characters that are in yes this. Well, I say a couple, but literally only one besides John Connor, <laughs> and the actress didn't even come back. Right. I think that's how they. I think that's how they acknowledge three, but not. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Like they took little. They took those little pieces from it, and I guess you're right. Yeah. So it would be then. So it's happening in a, in a few months, I think, because as soon as he so he fucking kisses Elena Bonham Carter. And then he's on death row. Basically, he's just signing his body over to her because he's going to die anyway. And she wants to use it for science. So, man, I love this. I love how this comes full circle at the end of the film. But he, they, they strap him down and they, uh, you know, the death by lethal injection, right? I love when they were strapping him down. At, they kept doing close-ups of all four restraints. And every time yes. they, they tightened it, there was like... Was it the sound effect from T2 and the T1000 showed up? It was it was one of the Terminator tropey sounds, but it was incorporated into the score. Yeah, the worm. Yes. There was very there's very subtle things throughout this that are just those tasty notes that you want to hit without going full bore like remember that? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So they're tying him down and and he, they're giving him the lethal injection and he's like, you know, the guys are like, you got any last words there, kiddo? And he's like, "No, no, no, no." He says, "I'll be back." No, he doesn't. <laughs> If he fucking did, oh my god. I kind of wish he did. Actually, I would have been pissed if he did, to be honest. Man, I would have checked the fuck out if that happened. No, you're right. He doesn't He doesn't say shit. And then he... He, he just winks. He fucking dies. And then you get a... Uh, as his eyes close, you get kind of like a text uh, lore dump for anyone that hasn't seen Terminator. Mm-hmm. Uh, explaining how the machines took over and Skynet became self-aware. And uh, now it's uh, 2018, so I guess last year the entire world was fucking destroyed by machines in an alternate timeline. Well, that's how we know we made it. (laughs) (laughs) They referenced 1997 in that little crawl. Yes, yes. And then it's like, yeah, and then in 2029, they send a Terminator back to fucking stop, you know, to kill John Connor and whatever. And yeah, this movie is nestled in the timeline perfectly to the point where it's it's in a place where that time travel can't be an issue because it's not there yet. Right, right. It's right on the cusp of it, which is pretty cool. And I love this movie for that. <laughs> yes, because they didn't want to fuck with it. And I totally get that because you know what? Sometimes you don't need to fucking see. You don't need to see it. You don't need to see the sausage get made. No, exactly. You just need to eat it. Um, And that's the thing with Genesis because it's like, remember all this stuff that, you know, Kyle Reese just told you about? Well, we're going to show you every motherfucking right, thing exactly. that happened. And then it takes the mystique out of it. And then it's like, oh, that's how it really happened? That's stupid. Or that's not as... Interesting. It's not what I thought, right? It could never live up to your expectation. No. Which is a problem. That's why you don't show that kind of shit. So we we jump forward, and it kind of starts us off in this future, um, you know, this dark future, let's call it where you see essentially, like, fighter jets going in on a Skynet base, and it's all these, like, fucking uh, massive satellite dishes. Yeah. And as as they're approaching with these jets, they just start getting fucking open-fired on from the ground from Skynet, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Don't you track a missile's POV? Yes. Like, do- <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty fucking rad, man. Yeah. The way that this is all shot and the camera angles and every, everything that's chosen in the cinematography perspective is very interesting and engaging. Throughout the whole fucking movie. I, I, I love the idea that, you know, yeah, Skynet is uh, a self-aware AI, but, you know, it, of course it would have all these fucking satellites to, to be able to, you know, to see and hear things all over the world. Sure. Well, it was the world's defense system that was hooked up to Skynet. Like, that was the whole thing. Right, Skynet right. was gonna, was going to control all our communications and weapons and all kinds of shit. And then it was like, oh, you humans, uh... Yeah, fuck you. You're all dead. Thanks for your thanks for your infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, it's ours now. Uh, yes, yeah, so this missile uh, hits the center of this uh, satellite field, uh, creating a big old crater. And then uh, via chopper, John Connor and a couple uh, resistance fighters drop in, and this is where we meet Christian Bale. Christian Bale popping his fucking prosium, dude. He's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the helicopter lands on a fucking Terminator head, and he just, like, pops it a few times just for fun. Yeah, the Archangels fucking are like, hey, man, when are we going to go shoot some nets at some dragons or whatever? He's like, that's stupid. <laughs> Shut up. 
Oh, good! The, the growliest Christian Bale outside of Batman. <laughs> I like him in this. I do too, um, especially later on when he's screaming at little children in his fucking Batman voice. Also, the best adult John Connor besides the guy who doesn't talk in Terminator 2? Yes! <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he didn't have enough screen time to ruin anything, so. Exactly. He's just like, here I am at the beginning and the end of the movie with old age makeup. Bye. Here here I am with my scars, which we'll talk about, surprisingly enough. Which is cool, man. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's, that's one of those subtle <laughs> things where I'm like, that's fucking dope. I see you. I see you over there. Um... But we're dropped into a uh, a battle sequence, and uh, the they basically storm this facility, which is underground. They they fucking drop through this giant hole that they've created. Um, you know, Bale has an obsession with going down holes. I just have to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> Benny's down there. He's like, "Oh, I missed you, kid. Oh, he's a fucking Budweiser. Has it hanging? He, it is like it is the it is like the fucking Lazarus prison from fucking Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, <laughs> it's that. It's the Bat Cave. It's the fucking Dragon's Den. It, you know, take your pick. Drops down. There's an old man lifting. Someone with a rope, he's like, what do you want? Deshi Basara! Oh, Mr. Wayne, look at my Terminator collection. We keep humans as prisoners. Tom Hardy make a pretty fucking cool Terminator. Oh, he's a little short, though. Uh, maybe not Terminator. But he would make a good John Connor, too, no? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. Um, there's a, The shot of John being lowered into this uh, facility kind of gave me some alien vibes, because it's yes. it kind of like this... It does look like the sh- machines have had their way with a certain amount of things design-wise, because he gets lowered into this this massive pit, and there's just kind of this... It looks like uh, robotic or cybernetic surfaces all over the wall, very akin to an alien hive. It feels... Yeah, it feels like when the, when the fucking roughnecks get dropped into the fucking... Dropped into Hadley's Hope, dude, and they're going through the fucking hallways. Yeah. And I was like... This is comfy. This is cozy. Because it didn't really, like, it doesn't really look like that, but it just feels like that. Yeah. Well, then you have, like, there's, like, a f- couple feet of water they're they're walking through. And I, I don't know if this kind of Terminator unit gets a name in the film, but this, like, flying, like, bulky construction kind of lifts out of the fucking water. And they just unload on this thing. Oh, dude, it's sick. I love this because it, th- it shows them walking over that spot. And then this massive fucking Terminator pops out of the water like a video game. Yeah, I think it's a T1 is what that is. Ah, okay. Yeah, and they're just like, shoot it! They just waste it and just like lowers back into the water. It felt like an amusement park ride for a second. Right? Dude, it felt like a fucking Disney ride. Yeah. Straight up. Oh no, you shot the Terminator. There it goes and just waits for the next round of passengers. Exactly, like a fucking, the great movie ride or like a fucking uh, Halloween Horror Nights walkthrough. It is cool as shit though because it's one of the examples this movie shows you of, of... Earlier models of these robots, which are extremely dangerous, but bulkier and less useful in certain situations. Um, Easier to manage. Well, they they do the thing where they kind of look at the first couple films and they're like, all right, from those battle scenes in the beginning and the end, like, okay, what can we take from that and update it? Kind of like, you know, what they did with Vader's costume in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Right, but I feel like the technology grows and kind of harkens to those things of to come and from the past and what's happening now in a very it's spectacularly like it's handled it's handled such in a way where where the the technology is not too far out so there's no way we can possibly overcome it right right there's still a way i mean it's going to be hard as fuck but there's still a way that we can overcome these robots right and i mean i they're going to be introduced shortly as we're talking about but the hunter killer units these like flying aircrafts yeah i feel like are directly based on the ones you see in the beginning of t2 oh straight up yeah which was nice i i thought that was a really smart way to to kind of keep it consistent mm-hmm. i felt like i felt like i was in that war watching this yeah you know yeah but we're still a couple of years off from even that part reese is still essentially like a fucking teenager in this film yeah and john connor is not the leader of the resistance yet that's an important no. point of contention in this movie because the chain of <sighs> the chain of command is trying to you know, stay intact, but at the same time, a lot of people consider John to be a prophesized hero because he had all this information built in about how to fight these machines. His mother fought them, but because you have all these these military goons around, are like <laughs> specifically Richter himself, Michael Ironside. Yes. Thank you so much for being in this film because he's always great. He's great in it. I mean, he, he's such a shit heel in it, but he's great at it. I mean, he usually is, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they, 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 they find uh, basically human prisoners in this fucking bunker. Yes. And uh, they, they also find on this computer system essentially like plans to make a T-800. Yeah, so T-800 isn't even a fucking thing yet, uh, which is the model of Arnold in the original films if you don't know any 
Terminator stuff. And they they don't they don't go into it heavily. It's a lot of like implied shit. Like John Connor knows what it is because he's dealt with it in the past, but they don't ever like come out and say it. He, he again, it's dropped in little portions. Shit like him responding to Sam Worthington later, and he's like, "I've never seen anything like this." And he's like, "I prepared my whole life for this, and this is right completely not what I expected." No, I love the context of John looking at this and hearing, and also not being allowed to see it. Because it's the yes. whole confidentiality thing and, like, you know, you, you're a need-to-know basis. But, like, him standing off to the side and someone going, oh, crap, uh, it's, it's you know, details about a new Terminator, a T-800. And he's like, fuck. Yeah, and he knows exactly what's coming. Yeah. Also, uh, Connor had just mentioned, but I love that, that seed of doubt that's in people's heads in this film. Of John Connor? Oh, about John. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I don't, I don't believe in prophecies. Yeah. Oh, my God. That totally works to this film's strength. It, it's just written really, really well. Well, because, like, the one commander that's there, like, you don't meet Ironside for a little bit, but uh, this one commander's, like, writing off John Connor, like, go go back up top and check on it. Like, you're you're not in charge here. And, you know, Bale's, of course, arguing with the guy, and he's, like, not taking any fucking quarter. So uh, John goes, he climbs back up out of the hole, and uh, everyone up there is fucking dead. And that's, well, yeah, yeah, including Terry Crews, who shows up for a hot second. Yeah, was that Terry Crews? Holy shit. It was, wasn't it? Terry Crews had a, had a scene. He was, I think it was, there was other stuff cut, and, like, he had a whole extended cameo, and it just got reduced to that. Yeah, he just comes up, and there's this dead Terry Crews laying there. Yeah. Which I guess the implication is that he's Common's brother. Yes. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think... That's even in the director's cut. Did we all watch the director's cut? I think we did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just see his corpse there. I mean, you don't see anything beyond that. Um, But he comes out of this hole, and then Skynet's immediately like, ah, 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 I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> you didn't say the magic, magic word. word. And fucking blows up the facility. <laughs> well, first he, he gets in the fucking helicopter to try to go after this fucking hunter killer, which is essentially like their prison ships. Yeah. And as he's, as he's chasing it, he gets like blown out of the air, like some kind of wind flare or something came and knocked him out of the sky. But you come to find out, he turns around, and it's like this massive motherfucking explosion in the distance, which was the base he just escaped from. Yeah. And then he gets attacked by the upper torso of a fucking Terminator, and I'm so glad this movie makes him scary again. Oh, man, it's so good. This thing has no legs and ragdolls. <laughs> Throws him into the fucking helicopter. Now, this man just crashed in a helicopter. <laughs> And this thing's coming after him. Yeah. And it, like, rips his fucking boot off, and I thought his foot came off for a second. I was like, no! Yeah, it's on the ground, can only use its hands, and it's just picking him up by the fucking scruff and throwing him around. Um, and then John runs back to his helicopter crash uh, and mounts the, uh, the like, machine gun that's attached to it and just rips this thing to shreds. He plants a shit ton of 50 cals in this thing's head and then just, like, falls down like, oh, thank God. Yeah, he's fucking s- screaming the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> then he finally gets like a call from the resistance. They're like, "All right, we're coming in to pick you up. How many survivors?" He's like, "Just one." Yeah, just John Connor, me, the hero of the series. Yeah, right. <laughs> Only the hero <laughs> right, of the series. Right. P.S. Uh, when we're down in that in in that um, abandoned Cyberdyne uh, lab, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's completely abandoned because there's totally people in cages down there. But uh, there are human test test subjects like out on these. I didn't see this the first time I saw this film, and then this time when I went back and revisited it, I caught it immediately. Oh yeah, I missed that. Well, I guess they're trying to test out like the skin to go on yes. the Terminator exoskeleton, and you can see some of these things, and the fucking skin is like stretched. It's clearly stretched over a robot. Yeah, <laughs> and but then Sam Worthington's just like on a fucking. Slab. Yeah, he's just on a fucking table. <laughs> oh, shit. No, I missed that entirely. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's just chilling. Just of note, it's just one of those cool things where uh, when 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 John pulls up that computer and says, he's oh, it's the T-800, some guy's like, oh, oh, that's there you go, man, just like you said. And he's like, no, no, it's worse than what I said. Stop reminding me of things I said. <laughs> it's going to be bad. I don't like the fact that they're all coming true. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, then, you know, he gets picked up by this fucking aircraft carrier, and then as he's, you know, being lifted off, you see this fucking Sam Worthington, the Sam Worthington motherfucker come out covered in, like, gunk. Oh, yeah, he looks like Dutch from Predator. And he's doing his patented, uh, he's doing his patented Zelda Link scream. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> he totally does! Let me tell you something. Sam Worthington is great in this film, except any time that he screams... Is just the stupidest thing. I don't know what it is. Every time he screams, it, it's like this. It, it aggravates me so much, and it always reminds me of Connor talking about the Clash of the Titans episode, going, "Yeah, yeah." I I want to know what he sounds like in real life when like stubs his toe. Like, is that what he does? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Ugh. Fucking. Uh, that's the only thing. That's the only thing I don't like about this movie is that. Uh, he comes out of this thing. And it's, it's, he's like kind of like a, the, the Deadpool uh, resurrection sequence. He's just th- sure. clawing at some from fucking rubble and he just screams because he has. Oh, he sees a uh, uh, a dead resistance fighter and yeah. steals his clothes. And then Charnetsky comes over and he's like, I can't let you take his jacket, son. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let you take the man's red badge, son. He just, and he just follows Sam Raimi around the whole film and haunts him by just saying, like, can't let you take that person's stuff. I fucking will. Wish. Dude, he's like his Fallout 3 companion, man. He's walking through the <laughs> Capital Wasteland trying to find caps. I found you a bottle cap, sir. Finds a box of Mentats in the guy's left pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Want some Nuka Cola or whatever? It'll give you cancer. Chunky chicken. It's on the house. Coyote, two days old. Iguana bits. <laughs> uh, we go to the submarine now, right? The the command HQ, the human command. Yeah. Well, they don't, they're not letting him in first. And he's like arguing with the fucking airplane pilot. He's like, just drop the ramp. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to do a Captain America. Open the fucking hatch. And then fucking Michael Ironside's in there and he's like, hey. Well, we have to, we should really address how fucking metal this is because he, they're, they don't show you the command base right away and he's in a plane. Uh, and he wants to go see them, and they're like, request denied, he's like, open the fucking door, I'm going to see him. And then it opens up, and you see they're flying over just this, like, stormy ocean, he just jumps into the fucking water. Looks like Obi-Wan going to fucking Kamino. Michael Ironside said he doesn't believe in prophecies, but he, he, he can't, with a good conscience, let John Connor fucking drown. Well, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> What happened to John? I wouldn't let him in. He was knocking on my submarine door, so I let him in. Well, him and, like, these, like, you know, head resistance members are, like, interrogating him, and Bale's not having any of it. He's like, what did my men die for? He's like, what did you find down there? A signal. Yes. Yeah, they, they come across. Uh, it's a, it is a signal you can send out that will deactivate a Skynet machine. Uh, and they basically say, that this is our best chance at a victory. And I have to say, I don't necessarily want to go into it now. We'll go into it more later as it becomes more prominent to the film. But, like, I really like this plot idea of, like, yeah, you know, we just found it in a Skynet base. And, uh... We can use it against them, and no one puts two and two together on that. So it must be useful. <laughs> they had a yellow power ring in there. We're going to use it against them. <laughs> Pretty much. Nothing bad could possibly happen. So you guys, you guys, you found this signal in a resistance base, right? No, it was like a, a major Skynet stronghold. They let us right into their computers, which they just, no problem. They usually don't, right? Yeah. <laughs> conveniently waited for us to get a hold of the signal before they blew us the fuck up. Oh, which, you know what, reminds me of another thing I really liked about John Connor's portrayal in this film, just real quick. They uh, they kind of do this thing where they carry over his character trait from the second film where he's, like, this guy who's, like, kind of a hacker. Yes, and it's so cool. Where he's, like, overriding computers and shit. Uh, yeah, that is fucking cool. And There's a lot of moments where it reminded me of his ATM heist. We even get a little fucking... We'll call back later. We'll talk about that. Oh, yeah. I like it. They tell him, essentially, that, you know, Skynet's looking for two people, and John Connor's number two on the list. And he's like, well, who the hell's number one? They're like, ah, some fucking kid, this guy Kyle Reese. And John Connor's like, oh, fuck. That's my dad. This is really awkward. I gotta go save my kid dad. Oh, my God. And that's basically what the movie hinges upon, but it's totally cool. Like, I love how... We make Kyle Reese the one that needs to survive this whole escapade. Yes, and I and I love that because you know some people I guarantee are sitting there saying, "Well, isn't this just a retread of the first couple movies with a different paint coat?" And it's like, well, if you really want to get technical, sure. But the way it's done, like I didn't really even think about that until the film was almost over. Well, it, right, it feels good. Like it, it's the same old story, but it's done in a compelling way. I'm looking at you, Terminator 3. I'm looking at you, Terminator Genesis. <laughs> I think we go back to uh, to uh, Marcus now, and he's kind of wandering around. He has no fucking idea what happened. There's a really cool shot where he comes over a hilltop and sees what I presume is L.A., and it's just fucking leveled. We get, we do get a quick scene where Bale goes back to like the main resistant hub that's not uh, the submarine. And he kind of meets up with Common, and he's like, yeah, I guess my brother didn't make it, huh? And Bryce Dallas Howard, who plays his wife. Very pregnant Bryce Dallas Howard. She is radiant as ever. Yes, she is. She doesn't get to do a lot in this film, but she's no. good in the scenes she has. I like the idea of just putting it out there that she's pregnant. It's like, of course you two will fucking get busy like as soon as the uh, you know the apocalypse is kickstarted. Like, <laughs> she's, a, she's also right up in the fucking action all the time, and... 
hats off to you. Pregnant as fuck, just being a badass? Like, yeah, yeah motherfucker, you're going to do this, and you're going to do this. And uh, the, the little time you get with her and John, I like, because they absolutely operate as one unit. Like, they're, it's yep. constantly we, 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 and they're working on, you know, ways to, to win the war together. It's awesome. Oh, it's totally cool. Well, and th- their big thing is they're looking for Kyle, because they kind of know what's going on with him. Yeah. Or what he has to do, essentially. And so Bale, uh, John Connor, has this whole plan that he's going to look on Skynet's, uh, you know, airwaves, even though it's risky, just to have a chance to get in contact with Kyle Reese. Right, and that's the whole thing, because throughout this, Christian Bale is listening to Linda Hamilton's tapes that she left him, which is so fucking cool. You know, Oh, I love that. How she's recording it in the first film, and, in, and then you hear a little bit of it in, in the second film, but he's listening back to those tapes, and it's so fucking cool, and she's telling him about his dad and all this, and he's like, he's telling Bryce Dallas Howard, he's like, Kyle Reese, he's like, that's my dad. Like, I need to make sure that we find him. And she even, Linda Hamilton in the tape says, you know, um, he's only a teenager right now. Uh, and he has no idea where to, like, look for him, but he knows that he plays, you know, obviously he plays a big part in the future of not only himself. But all humankind. Right. If Kyle Reese dies, it's the undoing of John Connor, which is the undoing of the fall of Skynet. Right. Yeah. And something these movies have never bothered to show you is, like, what happens if you do pluck someone from the timeline? Right. Like, does John just fucking disappear? Like, Well, and I, and I think that's what Genesis was trying to do in some ways. It just doesn't necessarily ever, like, hit the mark. No. No, because it keeps replacing all of its mistakes with solutions rather than just like, well, we're going to fuck this up and then this is the repercussions. It's like, oh, we're just going to keep fucking it up until we come to a solution? Cause I, yeah, because it's like, what, they send the T-1000 after Kyle Reese when he gets there and, you know, of course he... he defeats it or I guess what Sarah Connor pours acid on it or some shit yeah she like shoots a bunch of barrel it's look it's cool it looks cool but it's stupid I I guess my point is like I agree with what Connor's saying like if you're gonna take this in a totally wild direction like Kyle Reese gets there he gets shot in the fucking head he's dead right that would blow my mind I'd be like oh my god now what Yeah, yeah then what do you do like John Connor has to still be born I guess, or, you know, I, I don't know what they do, but something has to happen. Well, right, and then make it another... Does he disappear in the future like fucking Marty McFly? She fucks the Terminator? They get married, they live a quiet life. <laughs> in a cabin somewhere. In Texas. Or whatever. Um, I don't think... John John doesn't get in the radio yet, but he's been doing these, uh, these, these uh, daily or semi-daily kind of, like, rallying call radio broadcasts where he talks to different pockets of the resistance and kind of doles out information about how to fight terminators and think it's really cool right because we, we cut back to marcus and he actually is now in like the city proper yeah and uh he runs into one of these uh t600s he doesn't know it's a terminator he just yells out hey hey this thing this thing's fucking cool <laughs> uh it's pretty sweet this is what i was talking about with the thing in a, a guy in a suit terminator which I'm in. I'm with right. I, I I dig it. I think it's really cool. But I can see how like people would be like that looks stupid. But I like the idea of like it's a natural progression. Like these things weren't totally uh, perfected yet. Like they were still kind of like no. If you see them from behind or if they have some kind of clothing obscuring their features, like you don't know what's a fucking Terminator. Right. It's like the fucking. It's like the bugs from Mimic, dude. They get the fucking wings around and they look yeah. like a person, but it's not really. I also love the idea of wandering Terminators. Like you have these machines that are out and who've been out for so long that the fake skin they have in them is starting to. Slide off and die. I don't even know if they have fake skin on them yet. They just have like they do. It's not reliable skin. It's like a skin substitute kind of thing that just that decays really fast. Ah, uh, okay. Like a plastic kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. They're cool though. These things are bulky, man. And they have yes. like a Gatling gun just attached to the arm. Yeah, a Gatling gun and a grenade and explosive on the other arm. Um, yeah, man. And they're just they're just designed to be patrol units, just wander around fucking gunning things down. Strap that on your sore ass Blaine. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I totally it's, Knocked me the fuck over. <laughs> <laughs> they they walk up. Sam Worthington walks up to this toy store. Did you anybody? Did you the review catch this? No, no, I missed this. It was called Red Clown Toys. Why was Charles Lee Ray in there or something? Was I supposed to notice that? <laughs> well, close. It was John Wayne Gacy's face as like Pogo the Clown, ah. like on this Red Clown Toys thing. It, it's like blinking, you missed it. Shit, I just didn't know if either of you caught that. Sure, sure. And then fucking um, 
this Terminator comes out, starts shooting at him, and then fucking in comes Anton Yelchin. Oh, R.I.P. Man, I love this guy. I love him too, and I he was great. The way he died bothered me for days. Yeah. Oh, it is a bizarre death. Unfortunately, no one should have to die that way. It's his no. his his demise was stretched out and very painful, and it's awful for uh, for those that don't know when this happened. What was it was it after he did the second Star Trek film, or was it while it was filming the the second remake? Well. After the second one, and he was going supposed to reprise his role for the third movie. Yeah, essentially, he was what working on his car, and something happened where it started going towards him down the driveway and pinned him against the uh, the wall. Yeah, he got he got crushed between something and his car, and no one found him for a long time. That poor motherfucker, because he could have been saved. <laughs> yeah, it's awful, and he was pretty young when it happened too, and so we we really don't know kind of like what kind of star he would be, but all of his. All of his, uh, you know, his his early showings that were all good. I liked him in everything I've seen him in so far. So yeah, same. He he was great as Chekhov, and I thought he was great. Yes. In this movie. Oh yeah, he's playing Kyle Reese in this film. Young ass teenager Kyle Reese, and he drops his fucking line, man. And I was into it. I got to tell you something. By the end of this film, I was like that. I believe that that's Michael Bean. I believe that he grows up to be Michael Bean. <laughs> yeah. I believe I read that Anton did watch a lot of Michael Bean footage from the first movie to try to pick up on mannerisms and little nuances. Uh, oh, he's got film. it. Yeah. And he even looks like him a little bit, too, uh, to, again, towards the end. He doesn't look like the fucking the, the protein shithouse that is Jai Courtney. Uh, who fucking <laughs> cast that? You fucking idiot. And he's fucking jacked to shit with a six, but get, fuck you. <laughs> he's fucking gigantic. Um... But, uh, yeah, Kyle Reese saves him and kind of just takes it. He runs him up his building and, uh... Whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. <laughs> These fucking street urchins make a goddamn Home Alone trap for this fucking thing. Yes, they do. <laughs> it steps into a fucking, uh, into, uh, a trap on the ground that strings it up by one foot and it's just fucking, <laughs> fucking shooting its machine guns everywhere. It sounds silly, but it's actually really cool. Well, then, like I said, he says his line, come with me if you want to live. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then he like, he runs off with uh, Marcus while this thing's hanging there, and it's like, it literally shoots its foot off to escape. That's fucking rad. I love that, because that is what a machine would do. It's like, I'm fucking here. Right. Who cares? A, a foot. Like Turned itself into a peg-legged Terminator. That's fine. Pirate Terminator? Oh. Oh, God, they're on the ocean now? Jesus Christ. Nowhere safe. Yeah. Oh, they sure are. They're fucking walking right underneath that shit. Yeah, shoots its own foot off, uh, tries to uh, get into this building where they're holed up by firing explosives in the front. Uh, and then Kyle and this this mute child, Star, uh, and Marcus all run to the roof where Kyle instructs Star to cut something and to drop a giant fucking piece of metal shit on top of the Terminator. Sure does. Fucking flattens that boy. It's like the underside of a car that's strung up. Yeah, it does look like a car body. <laughs> and then we're introduced to a fucking hunter killer, like the big boy. Oh my god. This thing is awesome. It knocks over a building. This fucking thing flies by a building and it just falls over. Because... Yeah, the, just the force of this thing flying by this building makes it collapse. Um, and then we kind of get some more uh, exchanges between Kyle and uh, Marcus. Kyle points a shotgun at Marcus and Marcus fucking snatches it away from him. Sure does. I love it. He's, he's pissed because he recognizes like the patch on the jacket that Marcus is wearing as a resistance fighter. And he's like, you're not resistance. He's like, Why did, where did you steal that from? He's like, I didn't need it. Yeah, because Kyle's not part of the resistance yet. He's like, I hope I hope I get to be part of the resistance one day and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he claims he's the L.A. branch, but it's like, yeah. so it's super unofficial. It's just him and Star, and he's like, just you guys? You gonna call him a liar? Look around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, real quick, we get a scene where, like, John Connor... And some some of the resistance are like testing this signal thing on fucking Scorpinox. Yeah, what is it? It's like a Barracuda fucking Terminator. It's pretty cool. Or Anaconda or some shit. It is a Hydrobot. They call it that in the movie. Um, and it's just this this robot that is designed, I think, to hide out in bodies of water. Uh, wait for people to come around. It jumps out and attacks you like a fucking snake. Attacks you? It totally fucking vores you, man. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, it's 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 its face is just basically just like metallic, pointy face huggery fingers, and then a giant spike in the middle. It'll just fucking it emaciate your body. <laughs> you, you know that thing that they pull out of Keanu Reeves in the beginning of The Matrix? Kinda. It's like a giant one of those. F four feet long. Imagine one of those in your fucking belly button. Oof. Lord. I'm no I'm good. Comes right out your butthole. <laughs> <laughs>
poop out the machines, Neo. <laughs> it poops you out is what happens. Uh, and they're, this thing is all practical. looks awesome. Yeah, it's cool. And they're fucking wrestling this thing on the table. And then finally they, they test this signal on it. And it goes to sleep temporarily. And they, they establish, like, yeah, but you have to keep it loud and keep it going. or else Because if you lower it, then it snaps back and tries to kill you. Yeah, if there's any break in the signal... You're you're done. Yeah. And Bale goes, all right, it works. Destroy this thing. Great. Kill this fucking thing and strap that thing to me because I'm going to go bring down some big shit. I do love his uh, his attitude towards machines. Like, oh, yeah, destroy them all. Like, you know, take every one last, last one apart because that does come up in a really uh, meaningful way later on. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. And right now he makes his PSA. Oh, yes, that's right. Because as well as he's going to do this, we do cut back to uh, Marcus, Kyle, and Star. They're at the observatory, which is a location from the first two movies, I think. Uh, Griffith, Griffith Observatory, I think, is located near where either Kyle or the first Terminator comes back. Oh, right, yeah, because because Marcus needs a car. He's like, i got to find somebody up north. Yeah. yeah. And so they head there, because that's the only place that Kyle knows of that a car might be able to uh, work, if possible. Yeah. Um, or, or they could get it up and running, maybe. Yeah, and they go to this little, like, abode that they have, um, and that's where Kyle offers him two-day-old coyote, which is apparently better than three-day-old <laughs> coyote. I, I would argue that that's true. I love how Marcus essentially takes the, the uh, shotgun from... Kyle Reese again and Kyle's like well what the fuck man and he goes to take it back he's like come on take it back take it back and he's like okay so he goes to rip it out of Marcus's hand and Marcus has put kind of like a strap on it saying yeah now you can't get it taken away and he's like oh okay yeah which is the thing he does in the first movie doesn't it Kyle yes yes he does and I love those little see those little things man I don't know it's very cool and because if you're not thinking about it you're not going to really remember a detail like that no. unless you watch the first one really recently or if you watched it so many times where every detail in that movie is clear in your head but like if if you're not really looking for it, you're not going to see it, so it just looks like him being friendly. Right, but... It's a reference that I appreciate because you're not turning towards the camera and hammering me in the face with a wink and a nod and, like, this, this overt precisely. visual, like, you know, aid. It's it's fine. It's subtle. I like it. That's why all of the nods in this film work for me, and they're very, like, it's... It, it, they're just on point. Yeah, and then so, uh, Marcus... I'm assuming Marcus is some kind of, uh was very crafty in his criminal career. Uh, sure. He asks for the radio that they, they have over there, and Kyle says it doesn't work, and uh, Marcus basically doesn't say anything, but just goes about fixing it. Well, yeah. Yeah, right as he fixes it, that's when John starts to get on the radio and start to talk to everybody. Yeah, and he tells them, like, they hear John talking about, um, you know, how to disarm a T-600, and there's, like, a weak spot in the back of the neck, and you can, like, stab him in the back of it, and it'll, like, disorientate them while you can, like, either get away or destroy them or what have you. But then he is also, like... Yeah, P.S. Skynet's making new Terminators, and uh, we really need to band together and make sure that this shit uh, gets brought down, like, ASAP. He's also kind of doing this on the DL, because the main Resistance leaders don't know he's doing this as far as I gathered. No. It's all the people all over the world that are just kind of listening in, trying to get a little hope and a little bit of information uh, from this guy that they all kind of believe in. They show little cuts of people from all the worlds huddle around radios is kind of awesome. And that is another thing you have to remember. Like, Sci Skynet isn't just one central location. Like, it's it's like Umbrella Labs, right? It's all over the world. I mean, yeah. It's it's kind of how uh, there's obviously Ultron connections, but they, claw they call him in that movie clear and present. Like, he's everywhere. Right. And so Skynet is everywhere. They have a global network. And, you know, an AI is not just one fucking flash drive. Like, you're going to have to destroy... Lots of pieces of data. Or, or one mainframe. Well, yeah, and it, it, it's literally like, think about that, Connor. It is literally, if you destroyed all of it, but what remains on a flash drive, it could still replicate. Yep, right. He gives a speech with the idea that I hope Kyle hears this because he's been searching for him, and of course he does. So the next morning, they're, uh, they're fixing this car up, and uh, Marcus kind of reveals that, well, I need to go north, and uh, you guys are trying to go east, so uh, I'm going to peace out. And Kyle's like, what the fuck, you're just going to leave us here? He's like, north is all Terminator territory. Like, you're going to die if you go there. Marcus is like, don't care, need car, get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, like, turns on the the Jeep. He, like, hotwires the Jeep, and, like, I don't is it Alice in Chains playing, I think? It is Alice in Chains. Yeah, and Kyle's like, what is that? And he's like, oh, my, that reminds me of my brother. Now, do we ever establish who he is going to look for? I think he's looking for a for bottom carter personally i think he is too yeah he needs to get he's looking to get back to that so she can fucking 
I don't know what. Explain things, I guess? I'm assuming he wants to know what the fuck happened between uh, his lethal injection and waking up. And the, the only person yeah. he thinks would know is that person. Well, he's supposed to be dead. I mean, I mean, it, as far as he was concerned, so is she, because she was dying when he last time he saw her. Right. This is also the first scene in the film where you kind of get hinted at, besides, I guess, that one I missed, uh, but where you kind of get hinted that he he's may not be just a regular dude because while he's working on this car, he gets kind of a shock on his arm and has, like, zero reaction to it. You know what the thing is? Yes, you, you're right. The thing is, like, I don't think that the effort was made... Okay, so everything is de- dealt with pretty delicately in this film and, and really well. I don't think he was ever supposed to be a mystery. Sure. The mystery is for him to figure out. Yeah. Right? And, you, and you're and you kind of with him on that journey and you already know. I mean, I don't think it ruins the film to know it. I just think it's like a cool reveal if you don't know going in. Yeah. It's totally a cool reveal, but I think the, it's more impactful that we know and we're waiting for it to be revealed to him because he doesn't know. Yeah, we're going to get to it because the moment in question is beautiful. Yeah. But, uh... As so, Marcus is going to take the jeep, um, and he's kind of telling Kyle and Star to bugger off. But then there's a shot where uh, Star's hands start shaking, um, and she's mute, so she can't obviously give a vocal warning. But uh, they notice these this small little fucking Terminator drone. Yeah, they're like scouts, an aerobot or something like that. He calls it. Yeah, and then he's just like, he's like, what "The fuck is that?" And he's like, "Scouts for Terminators." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. yeah. So then you have to. Uh, First of two cool chase sequences where they run away from this thing. Um, it, but <laughs> Kyle doesn't know how to drive. This Jeep is going all over the fucking place. <laughs> and he's it's fucking Mark is like, we tried to kill us. Kyle's like, I don't know how to drive. The idea is to stay alive. I'm going to drive. And he fucking pushes yeah, I'm gonna Kyle drive. out of the fucking Jeep. <laughs> well, before he does that, the little drone, like it actually gets a facial uh, scan of Kyle's you know, face, and then it just, like, peters off because it got its job done. Yes. And Marcus just fucking turns around. I don't know where he got this from, but he takes this large piece of rebar and just, like, pole vaults this fucking thing at this drone and just destroys it on one shot. It's a fucking tire iron. He takes the tire iron. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, and he fucking whips (laughs) it right at that thing. I get your first hint where it's like, you're not really normal, are you? No one questions it, though. No. You have deadly accuracy. And that fucking thing was, like, how far away? Yeah, no one questions how awesome Marcus is at certain things. Were you a football player or what? No, I was just a bank robber. <laughs> Actually, I, I used to do heists, but okay. You ever see the movie Heat? It was kind of like that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> movie? What? I'm not sure if I'm Val Kilmer or uh, or Robert Downey Jr. Ro- Robert Downey Jr. Robert De Niro or Al Pacino. Yeah, I- Imagine <laughs> if that was Robert Downey Jr. in that movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sitting across from fucking Pacino in that restaurant. What are you doing, pretty boy? Uh, I'm here to rob the bank with you, Al. We're, uh, here to rob some, uh, some banks, all right? You want to do it? Let's do it. Al, Al, are we going to do this or not? I don't, uh, I don't know. We're going to fucking do it, RDJ. Let's do it. I just had coffee. I'm secretly a cop. <laughs> that was, that was heat, everybody, heat. Yeah, heat. You can buy tickets to our live performance in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe if you want to see Movie Dumpster, let's, let's. Let's get those rallies. They drive off and they end up in this like burned out fucking 7-Eleven to, uh, I guess, find some gas and maybe some food. Yeah, Slurpee, man. So they pull up to this gas station and Charnetsky walks back out of the shotgun. He's like, I thought I told you I'm not going to let you take the man's jacket. Dude, I wish it was fucking Charnetsky. It's like these like... It's a gang. Again, these fallout fucking wasteland ass bandits. <laughs> He's fucking, yeah. there's a bunch of NPCs come <laughs> running out of this gas station. I can't let you take my fuel, sir. <laughs> That's my fucking food, son. You can't have it. Well, Anton Yelchin's like, well, we saw the sign out front, the resistance sign. He's like, I didn't put that there. The old lady put that there. And then Granny Van Dam fucking walks out. Excuse me, rolls out. <laughs> you strapping young men. Here, yeah, eat our carrots. You want food? There's a price. Drop your pants. Do you want to eat some carrots? Well, you got to take your pants off there, Mr. Worthington. Make it worth my while. Yes, especially you, you Australian piece of meat. <laughs> God, I wonder if he's like a Ken doll under all that or what. Maybe. Hey, take, take me down under. <laughs> actually, actually, I I know for a fact that he's not, because when he came out of that fucking hole in the beginning of the film, I swear to God I saw his dick. I th- yeah, I think we saw his dick. Oh, man. So, uh... Salami Sam, dude. Sure. The Terminators have dick technology. <laughs> Why not? They got a swing. Uh, you, y'all, you fresh face boy, you're too young for me. Get out of here. <laughs> Can a Terminator get hot or what? <laughs> Let's see that little dinger. Of course, Granny Van Dam would be in the company of a bunch of like rugged gunmen, just in a fucking. <laughs> they're, they're my sex slaves. Well, 
jail. You, you know, she's asking if he can get hard. His entire body's hard if you want to get technical. <laughs> Is that her personal, like, harem? Like, is that... You think T-1000's dick can, like, grow, like, five feet? Yeah, I would assume. Yeah, kind of like Pinocchio. It would turn into a fucking drill, like Tetsuo. Oh, my God, it could, yeah. No. Only only knives and stabbing weapons. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it becomes a giant spike. This is not the first time on this show we've talked about the Terminator's penis. Let's be real. <laughs> Randy Quaid's penis. Yeah, it, it comes up a lot. I'm not really sure why, but uh, keeps happening. As a robot, mind you. Not Randy Quaid's regular their penis uh so granny van dam she gives him fucking some food and again here's another hint that something's weird with sam worthington he's not eating yeah you know these people are fucking starving and this guy doesn't even have a reaction what what's wrong with you boy would you like some crave cereal or what all i have is chocolate i don't like chocolate thank you oh my god where are you from you from fucking <laughs> uh, i fucked that from one the up fucking bl- you from the fucking block <laughs> I don't know, bruv. We're getting some Crave chocolate cereal. John Boyega, your neighbor? What is that? Um, I don't know. He doesn't even have his fucking Australian accent in this. Actually, his accent doesn't really slip in this movie. No, it's fine. I think he does better than uh, Christian. Yes. But I think they're both fine. So there's this scene actually has like one of the only uh, logical holes that I don't like, but it doesn't break the film. And even McG has come out and said, yeah, it's a little silly. Um... So basically, they're all having this kind of standoff about the food and the water, and the people that this old woman are shacked up with get upset that she's giving out their food, their water, guns get drawn. While this is happening, a giant <laughs> dude Terminator robot crashes the ceiling and scoops people up. As cool as this thing is, how did no one hear this thing coming? Well, you know what? The little girl did. John Hurd <laughs> had some kind of deal with Cyberdyne going back into the late 90s. Dropped it from high altitude? <laughs> Wait a second. He gave this fucking thing a pair of Nikes or something? Some sneakers? Ah, uh, you know, maybe. Maybe. I- I'm just saying, like, you know, he had that deal in place. And, uh, you know, even though they're destroying humankind in this reality, John, you know, he never breaks a deal. <laughs> So he had to open up that fucking portal and drop this robot in there. This thing didn't walk up on them. However, like, the hunter killers do make a certain sound, and it's loud. To Connor's point, you could have had something where it's like you just hear this thing coming down and then impacting, but I feel like there would have been way more damage on impact. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Yes, it's one of those things where it's like, how did they not hear this thing coming? But, like, it totally doesn't detract from the rest of the film for me? No, no. No, because I was too distracted by this thing fucking scooping people up and putting them into a pen on a ship. I had totally forgot this happened, and this fucking giant hand comes in and grabs Granny Van Damme. I'm like, what? <laughs> Did that the fucking thing just squish that bitch? She's like, my wheelchair and my gun! Um, yeah, it's, which is very, uh, you know, non-cybernet or, or uh, cyberdon because as far as we know they were trying to kill humans, not right. round them up. Well, they gotta build, they gotta build a better machine, man. Yeah, if they can scan you know, a million different fucking faces is they can integrate wherever. Yeah, yeah. And simultaneously look for, for Kyle Reese. So then this movie, for about 10 solid minutes, becomes a Mad Max film, and it's kind of awesome. Oh, yeah. It's great. This fucking whole sequence is amazing. This thing is attacking this gas station, and people start running in every fucking direction. And some of them get into vehicles, and between the hunter killer, the prisoner transport, and this colossal Terminator unit, I'm not even sure what the fuck it's called. I don't know. Uh, dude, this, l- l- I feel like we gotta unpack this a little bit. This thing is like a 300 foot tall robot that has a gun for a head and has these massive claw hands like a fucking astral dreadnought. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's gigantic. You're not getting away from this thing. Mm -mm. Yeah, and I'm so glad that we get to see Skynet in its full, terrifying, brutal-like glory because we only ever get to see the glimpse of what happened in Terminator 2, like the fucking final boss in every movie, which since T2 has just been some kind of version of liquid metal. This is just destroyer fucking robot, like rock your shit. Yeah, and now here we have, here in this movie, you have instances of all kinds of applications of this kind of technology. It's awesome. Uh, Also, just real quick, I want to make a note. This particular incarnation of a Skynet killer robot has a laser on its head. However, we are using regular ammunition for pretty much every other gun in this film. Yeah. We are not to that M7 fucking plasma assault rifle yet. We're just not there yet. No. No. We're a couple years off. It's not 2029 yet. And I like that. It's all ballistic, uh... 
rounds for the most part, like you're saying. I think that's fucking rad. I was like, that's what I was saying. That come to my point from before too. Like, they're everything's not quite there yet. Not even Skynet is quite there yet to what we know no, them no. to be. You know, there, there's hints of it as you get closer to the climax. Sure, but uh, you don't really see it till that point in the film at all. Yeah, granted, the weapon this thing has is still fucking terrifying because it shoots this like it's like a rail gun. Like it shoots some kind of projectile and then it causes this like staticky explosion uh, wherever it hits. Uh, and these people are getting to vehicles, just getting fucking picked off like just without any kind of effort whatsoever those cars get fucking evaporated and i love this because everybody's trying to <laughs> drive away and it's just like kaboof you're dead kaboof they literally take out yeah. every everybody dies <laughs> except for they would literally be better off going back underground where that guy was handing the food up yeah they, they might have had a chance oh that guy's still down there eating his fucking carrots waiting for it to blow over <laughs> i could survive down here for like 10 years with all this food i got 10 buckets of chunky chicken good night that'll no that'll live that'll last charnetsky like a night. At least for this body. <laughs> He's just gonna die from a heart attack anyway. Gunner's Gunner's sitting there just watching his fucking like clock on the wall. Eh, it's only a matter of time. Well, your heart gives out, you need a new one. It's not my time yet. It's been 25 days since I've seen Chernitsky the Brown. <laughs> Any day now. Like how, like how every... Every measurement of time for Gunner is like twenty five something. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's twenty. It's in units of twenty five. It's been twenty five seconds since it's I. It's been twenty five days since I since the robots attacked. Since the last twenty five days, <laughs> I only count my my time in twenty five. It's been twenty five bullets since somebody shot another round at me. How much money do you have? Three twenty fives. Twenty five dollars. To say seventy five, Tarnetsky. <laughs> Marcus comes up with this fucking ingenious plan to essentially, like, pull the plug on this, uh... This gasoline tanker, right? Because they can't get away, right? Yeah, yeah. If they run, they'll they'll get shot. Well, yeah, because Kyle says like, look, if we drive like right now, we'll get toasted. And uh, so they they get in this like kind of like Mack truck with this big fucking like. Uh... They get into Furiosa's war rig, okay? <laughs> oh, it's a tanker, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a rig. It's an eighteen wheeler that's got a fucking plow in the front of it. It's covered in spikes and fucking metal shielding. It's awesome. They're spraying fucking. They're spraying silver shit in their mouth. God, fucking Kyle's like, witness me. <laughs> That's why Star doesn't talk. She's been hitting the fucking uh, spray a little too hard. Oh yeah, man. It does look like something. Uh, it looks like a mix between Furious's War Rig and the uh, the gas tanker that uh, Max drives in Road Warrior. Um, but they drive off from this thing and they blow up the uh, the gas station, essentially trying to take out this robot. It's a huge explosion, and Kyle's like, "Yep." Burn that motherfuck. And if we know anything from these movies, we know that that is not going to work. It's just kind of... Uh, okay, the sound these things make... Oh, yeah. These things make are awesome. It's this kind of... It's this... Like, obviously metallic kind of grumble it's making. It's not quite Transformer. Yeah. <laughs> It's like Transformers, but like 0.5 playback speed. Yeah, if like if like Transformers fuck the tripods from War of the Worlds, and then you yeah. and then you turned it down a little bit, that's what it sounds like. So this thing chases them. Um, what? No, this thing hops back into the aerial transport. Oh, but it drops off out of its legs, dude. It's fucking motorcycles, motor terminators. It's fucking sick. This thing. This, so they're trying to outrun this fucking thing, and this thing's like, oh yeah, motherfucker. And then it shoots these two uh, uh, motor Terminator motorcycles out of its legs, and then it goes chasing after him. It's fucking so cool. Well, well, Reese takes one out with this fucking like oil slick he knocks off the back of the truck. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't destroy it because it ends up coming back a little bit later. But, you know, it puts it out of commission while the other one's still going after it. And these things have, like, machine guns on the front of them and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're like the Bat Pod from Dark Knight, but without a driver. So, this chase is awesome. Uh, it's They're slamming through cars. Uh, there's there's gunfire exchanges. Kyle almost falls out of the fucking truck at some point. Yeah. To deal with the second motorcycle unit, Marcus tells Kyle to drop... Because the, they drove... Oh, that's right. It's a, it's a tow truck is what it is. I'm sorry. It's not an 18 wheeler. Um... He tells them to drop the uh, the hook, the ball and hook for the tow truck. Yeah, the winch. Which then gets, yeah, the winch, which then gets caught up in the wheel of this fucking motorcycle Terminator. They drag it for a hot minute. A hunter killer shows up in front of them, blows up the bridge that they've now been driving off for a few seconds. Marcus fucking turns the wheel, throws himself into a skid, and it whips the motorcycle <laughs> over their head into the fucking engine of his hunter killer. <laughs> and it blows it up. I got to tell you something. We were just talking about that, right? Um, we were talking about T3 and that whole action sequence in the beginning, 
right? And you're like, oh, it's so cool because the she's driving a fucking crane truck or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is so much more... Uh, there's stakes here, right? There's so yeah. there's so much more at risk, and like we just saw this thing decimate all these fucking people. Like that means oh that yeah. means that means this is no funny fucking business. Like if this thing gets catches up to them or right, gets a good shot at them, they're fucking dead. Right. And this whole action sequence takes place for a reason because they're trying to get away. I mean, I think some of the mystique to the one in T3, and granted, I haven't seen it since it was in theaters, was that it was like during the daytime. You didn't see a lot of that in the first or second film, like in public, and it's like going through a fucking part of town. I think that, to me, is what makes that scene interesting. But you're you're 100% right. Like, this is way more effective. It's cool, but I'm never like worried about anybody right right i'm just like okay shit's happening and it looks cool i guess this i'm like oh fuck like oh fuck that fucking thing that fucking thing you know well you know and it it caps off with fucking kyle and star falling out of the truck over the side of the bridge and you're like oh shit they get fucking scooped right into that transport yeah the 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 collector unit as i'll call it is uh grabs them and drops them right into the uh the prisoner transport and then they the the machines blow up the fucking truck that Marcus is still sitting in, and he <laughs> he fuck he grabs a fire axe. He fucking Matthew McConaughey's this thing. Except he's more successful than Matthew McConaughey. Sure um, is. He jumps out of this fucking truck with a fire axe and slams it into the top of this fucking ship. Come on, big boy! And he fucking plants it right on top of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then rolls over the side where, like, there's these small, like, kind of, like, window units or slats or whatever for the prisoners are being transported. Um, and he's just like, you fuck this, and starts fucking chopping down the window. Oh, yeah, he's trying to fucking get them out of there. This fucking collector unit, now here's more, this is, if you didn't know the Marcus twist, this whole sequence would be... Uh, not a dead giveaway, but you'd be like, hang on. Um, it's a dead giveaway. This thing picks him up and slams him against the top of the fucking it transport. It steps on him. <laughs> it steps on him. And he's like, ow. It should absolutely pancake him. And he's like, that kind of tickled. He's like, ah, fuck. And then doesn't it just like fucking flick him off? Yeah. Dude, it flings him into the water like 200 feet down. And he literally skids for like a solid 10 <laughs> seconds. Skips across the fucking water. He skips like a fucking stone. like, And he's, he's eh, the whole time. <laughs> he is going eh. Yeah, yeah. Like, also, like, I didn't expect that. Like, I was like, oh, he's going to fucking get Kyle out. This fucking thing grabs him, just fucking wings him across the fucking canyon. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> if he was able to hang on for, like, maybe another, like, minute, he would have been good because then the Resistance fucking jet fighters show up. Yeah. Yeah, I do like how this is set up because they're there because John Connor is back at the base and basically through their monitoring systems, they see that Skynet is awfully deep into their territory and he makes a point he's like they would not be this close if they weren't looking for something yeah so he orders two of his pilots to go out there and kind of tail him see what's going on and the little small little dog fight breaks out um one of them gets taken down right oh shot to shit oh straight yeah up. one straight up yeah. dies just kaplooey the second one takes a hit and the pilot uh, ejects but it's the, the point is kyle and star are on their way to skynet they're they are not rescued yeah yeah the the, the other pilot ejects and You know, you don't find out exactly what happens to her right away. Yes, but her name is Williams, as we know at first anyway. Blair Williams, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so Marcus wakes up at the end of the stream, and he kind of, like, stumbles around, and he finds Blair hanging from, like, this uh, telephone pole. Yeah, he's washed up like fucking Aragorn. (laughs) Without a scratch on him. Without a fucking scratch on him. Even though the force he hit the water at would have, like, just made his entire body explode. He fucking went right over that edge with that wog. There he goes. He took a little tumble over a cliff. (laughs) He took a tumble over the cliff. Uh, So he runs up, and he sees Blair. She's, like, kind of, her parachute is all tangled up in a, uh, like, a fucking... Uh, like an electrical tower, something like that. I guess. I think it's a, it, it might be like a busted up windmill or some shit, or like a yeah, a metal structure. The thing from Tremors that they climb up. No, I don't know. Yes, uh, played by Blair is played by uh, Moon Bloodgood. Uh, I haven't seen her in much of anything. This is the only film I've seen her in. I think it is the only thing I've seen her in. Now that I think about it, but she's good in this. Like I don't, I don't get that. She's got a fucking like Furiosa stripe going on. 
predating. Yeah, she's got a fucking red war paint yeah. across her eyes. Yeah, it's awesome. She's she's great. I think she's great. Everybody's very good in this movie. Yeah, I don't think there's a bad performance in this movie. I, I, I don't think so. I'm trying to think of somebody that I was like, I don't like that character or whatever. Even Common's good. He's fine. Oh, yeah. Common's one note, but he's also, like, sad because his Terry Crews died. Well, yeah. So he's supposed to be kind of, like, depressed the whole film. But, yeah, I don't think anyone is, is bad in this movie. And the only thing we've noted so far from Sam Worthington is that he can't scream. He just can't do it. We don't know what it is. I don't know. Whatever that is, let's just, let's just ADR him with somebody else. I don't care who it is. Yeah, ADR him, like, in that cut scene from fucking Terminator 3 where you have Arnold Schwarzenegger as some kind of fucking lieutenant being modeled for the T-800. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Fucking... Kill me. Yeah, just like that, man. My buddy Aaron posted that on, po- posted that on my wall. I didn't even know that was a thing until the other day. And you know what? Fuck you. Whoever filmed that, fuck you. That ties really into the um the whole tone mess that you were describing Ugh. that movie is, where it's just it doesn't know if it wants to be comedy and doesn't know if it wants to be straight up action. It's like a scene out of Small Soldiers, but uh, we I, I digress. But that's <laughs> but no, no no. Don't you fucking talk about Small Soldiers like that? That's a great film. Well, I mean, in the context of Small Soldiers, is very tongue in cheek. Sure, and it works. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Terminator should not be like Terminator should not be tongue in cheek. No, not at all. Not even in the slightest. Sorry. Stupid. So, so yeah, Marcus saves Blair, and they kind of, like, you know, bond a little, and she says, okay, I'll, I'll take you back to my base, because as far as she's concerned, he's, like, one of the survivors of this, uh, this fight against the Terminators. Yeah. And, uh, it starts raining, so they kind of stop at, like, this junkyard, and, uh, there's this scene where she changes, and it's a notorious scene in the sense of, like, at Comic-Con or some shit, Mc- Mick G was talking about when this film was being promoted about, oh, there's a scene where uh, you could see she has her top off. You guys want to see that? That's why I think I remember That's why I think I think remember this being more egregious than it is. That's so ridiculous. Like, the point of the scene is to show you that not only in a world where it's basically the wild wild west you know the post-apocalyptic thing but like sam worthington is totally respectful to this woman while she's washing herself right yeah and she even turns around like oh you're not going to try to make a pass at me basically so these looter rapists show up and this fucking guy couldn't place him i was like i know that fucking guy did anybody recognize this guy uh no no you you might not even recognize him after what i tell you but he is the homeless guy from spawn who um is the dad of the kid from Pet Cemetery, the original Pet Cemetery? Really? Yeah, and he's like, he's like, oh, here you go, you go. Oh no, you gonna spit? I give you food and you spit it out. You don't eat it. Holy shit! And the shit. kid's like, but it's moldy. And then Spawn fucking throws him into a dumpster or some shit. Yes, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> scumbag of all place of all places to recognize someone from yeah he's the guy that spawn you know throws him into a dumpster by his pants he's the, he's the one who tries to make his kid eat moldy bread out of a dumpster <laughs> yeah <laughs> well this guy he comes in he goes yeah we've been watching you <laughs> and she's totally like open to him she's like she's like yeah you know i got some fucking supplies if you need some shit help yourself blah 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 yeah like what do you got there she's like antibiotics and food and water he's like take what you need and they're just like, we're here for the other thing. We're here for your sweet meat. Well, the best part is she starts whipping their ass at first, but then she kind of gets ganged up on. I know. she, But she has she's such a fucking badass because she's like, she's like, why don't you put a fucking bullet in that? Because he's pointing a gun at her. He's like, why don't you put a fucking, why don't you rack a bullet in that fucking chamber first? And she's like, <laughs> you know, if you walk right now, you know, I, I might go easy on you or some shit like that. Right, because she has her gun off to the side and he steals and that's what he's pointing at her. Exactly. She rocks this fucking dude real quick. A couple of them. Dude, she, she she does. And then as she starts to get overtaken, Sam Worthington fucking charges in with like a fucking plank oh. of wood. <laughs> oh, yeah, he two by fours this fucker right over the head. He does the old Keenan Thompson move. <laughs> <laughs> Try the bigger one. Marcus runs in and fucking murks these dudes. He stabs a guy with a fucking screwdriver in the chest. <laughs> yes, he does. This is like some Jason Bourne-ass shit he pulls on them. Yeah, he he disarms and just annihilates these dudes. He pulls he pulls some other guy in front of him, and then the other guy that's on the bad guy's team shoots that guy. And the guy's like, oh my god, Rick! Uh, I love this too, because like, he throws him in the ground, and the uh, spawn guy's like, he's like, oh, kill him, he's not gonna do anything, man, blah, blah, blah. And then fucking Blair just rolls up and fucking shoots this guy right in the fucking stomach and then throws him his bag well yeah because when when 
when they first start intimidating her, she's like, listen, guys, uh, the machines are the real enemies. And they're like, no, oh, yeah, you could say that. And then when the, the chips are fucking down, the guy's like, well, you know, the, the machines are the real enemy. You won't want to kill me. <laughs> yeah. You said it. You said it before. Fucking Mr. Orange is this motherfucker. Well, then they go and they, they make a campfire and... Uh, they have a little, like, heart-to-heart, and, you know, Blair's like, oh, I'm getting cold, and uh, Worthington doesn't offer her his jacket or anything, so she just comes over and starts cuddling with him. She's like, I just need the body heat. And he's like, uh... So here's this weird thing, right? Because, we're, again, we're getting these little glimpses that this guy is part machine, obviously. But his brain and his heart are human, and he thinks he's human. Right, because he's mo- he yeah. is mostly human. He, I mean, he's a cyborg, right? He he's got a robot body, but he has the brain and the heart of a human. Right. He doesn't have any emotional response to her at first, like at all. He even, like his arm. He doesn't even wrap his arm around her. He just like lets he like holds his arm and just like lets her hold him. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, man, your heart is fucking beating out of your chest. It's it's, it's a strong, it's a good one. And she's like, uh, then she like pep talks him or whatever. And she's like, she's like, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. And he's like, I'm not a good man. I did bad shit. <laughs> he doesn't elaborate though. No, not at all. Which is kind of cool because it's vague. Yeah, I like that I don't know what he did. No, me neither. And then, I'm, you know, it's like the Han Solo thing where he just tells you shit that happened in his past, but not really. Like, if, is it true or not? Right. It's like, what you heard before doesn't really matter anymore no. because the world is different now. Like, everything has changed. Oh, yeah. And when he does something cool, some like when he like fixes that radio, that everybody's just like, oh, that's awesome. Not like, yeah. where'd you learn to do that? How did you do that? Are you magic? Exactly. Are you a Jedi? <laughs> are Are you a wizard? I heard about that. Do you think Do you think Bale? You know, is, do you think John Connor's doing like those classes like he was in fucking uh, Reign of Fire, where he's like pretending like he came up with Star Wars? <laughs> he's, t- <laughs> he's telling Anton Yelchin all about it. Yeah, he, him and Kyle Reese are going down the bunker, and he's like, and he's and he's telling him the story of Star Wars, like putting on plays for him. I don't know how this is relevant, John. The machines are knocking down the doors. Uh, John. We, we get this quick scene where uh, John Connor and Common, they kind of go out to, you know, essentially, like, uh, they go a lot closer to the, to the Skynet headquarters than they really feel comfortable going because they want to test out the signal weapon. And uh, John, he sets off, like, an explosive a little bit further down the range, and he says, I want to try it on something big to make sure this is going to work. And this hunter-killer fucking comes over the horizon and it just starts approaching uh, the explosion, and then John jacks up the signal, and it comes right towards him, and they're fucking sweating bullets. This scene's fucking cool, dude. Um, it's like a dark night, and they're like on this fucking uh, uh, mountain range. Dark night. Uh, I'm gonna use this signal to kill this fucking thing. Here we go. Yeah, we gave him the signal. If that was Michael Jai White with him, this scene would have been perfect. <laughs> Instead of common? Yeah, instead of common. It's a kind of, he's just like, it's a pretty dark night, and Christian's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. <laughs> Hell yeah. So this HK, as they call it, starts heading towards them, and they're, they're, you know, common's jacking the signal up, and as it's about to, like, get, you know, right on top of them, it crashes into the fucking side of the mountain, and, uh, you know, they're cheering, and Bale pulls out this fucking RPG and just blows it to smithereens. It's so casually, they're like, fuck yeah, it worked. He's like, yeah, it totally did. Hang on one second. <laughs> Then they call Michael Ironside, and he's like, it works, it really works. And Michael Ironside's like, great, we're going to nuke fucking Skynet tomorrow, bye. And he's like, wait a second, there's prisoners in there. And he's like, fuck them. Fuck em. <laughs> in true Michael Ironside fashion. It's like if his character from Starship Troopers like had an early, had, you know, some kind of humble beginning, except he gets fucking... Exactly. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> before he lost his hand? No, after he lost his hand. His hand, he lost both arms, man, and they're cybernetic. Rico! Do it, Rico! <laughs> <laughs> do it. I'm talking about when Schwarzenegger dropped him off that elevator in the, at the end of Total Recall. Oh, yeah, yeah, that too, yeah. John Hurt caught him. John Kurt caught him halfway through his fall and just put him somewhere else. Oh, man. Opened a portal. Dropped him right here. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my future. Well, everything's a mess, but I love it. It's fine. <laughs> Robots. Daniel Baldwin's just sitting there. He just reaches back into the back of the car and hands him the fucking script. You're going to be in this movie, this movie, and this movie. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out how you survive. We're not sure yet. Oh, there you go. Fucking Daniel Baldwin dug that thing out of his leg and put it in that fucking Skynet basement. 
that's what the signal is. Ironside's in the back of the fucking uh, car. He's like, who is Sam Fisher, and what do I need to know about him? <laughs> what is the fucking thing in his leg, the Tesseract? Like, why is it in all these <laughs> such important locations? <laughs> I think it might be. We'll have to scrub some old episodes to figure out how we uh, figured out what Power Stone was what. It's a tele- telekinesis. I think he does have the Tesseract in his leg. I'm almost positive. And, no, it's a time. It's a time stone. That's what it is. We cut back to Marcus and Blair, and uh, it's daytime, and they've kind of they've arrived at the outskirts of the human base. Uh, and there's a minefield out in front of it, and that's important. But Blair says, hey, don't worry about it. They're magnetic. Nothing could possibly go wrong. This was cool, man. I like this. So as Marcus is walking through this field, uh, there is kind of a sense of dread building up because you might know something, but he doesn't. And uh, these little magnetic uh, minds start to shake. Um, And then one of them attaches itself to his leg. Marcus and Blair kind of share a oh fuck expression before this thing blows him to shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then he has like, he has like a mini flashback when he gets fucking blown up. Yeah. To his uh his execution and not even his execution, him getting operated on. I think. Yeah. So then the next few shots are really fucking cool. It cuts right from him getting hit to a POV down looking on him as people are carrying him, and he is just he's racked in pain. There's people shouting all over the place. You know, it's, it's the, your typical kind of medical speak. Um. And uh, they put him down, uh, and they're, like, suddenly it, uh, it kind of unravels. They're like, why did he get hit? Like, he has a prosthetic limb? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, how did it not blow off? Uh, yeah. Um, and then eventually you see, now that the POV switches to him looking up at everyone, and Bryce Dallas Howard rips open his shirt to look for more damage, has a, an aghast expression, and then has common knock him unconscious. Yep. <laughs> because he's full of fucking gears and shit. Because he's fucking full of metal. Um, but we haven't seen that yet. So when he comes to, he's being strung up in this fucking silo or something. Uh, man, he's in, like, stocks, but it's like cha- he's, like, chained up over this fucking pit. Yes. And Bale has this great line. He goes, I guess the devil's been busy. The devil's hands have been busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's freaked the fuck out, by the way, because everything, like, we've kind of talked about a little bit earlier in this episode, but everything he's known up to this point is... It shakes him because he didn't know about this at all. No. I, I like how this freaks fucking everybody out. Yeah, but especially John, though, because John yeah. is supposed to be the one who's prepared and, like, dealt with this shit, like, for, you know, what's to come. And this guy is completely different because he, th- he even says he's, like, he, he you know, he thinks he's human. He has a fucking brain. He has a heart that beats and all this shit. And... He's like the perfect infiltration unit. Yeah. And he thinks he's going to kill him, like, if he lets him go, and everybody in the facility. Yeah, the the only one that's kind of got his side, but she's not really saying anything yet, is Blair. But yeah. Common wants to kill him because of what happened with his brother, and, and John doesn't trust it. Well, they think Skynet sent him. Yeah. But the um the actual reveal of his body is... um. Uh, John Connor's interrogating him, and uh, there's a question asked. Kimmer what it was, but Marcus is like, oh, oh, John says, like, you think you're human? He goes, I am human. And so he undoes his, his the restraints around his head so he can look down, and this is where you get the actual shot of Worthington's mostly blown up body, and he's just got this fucking metal endoskeleton. And he's fucking horrified. Uh, everyone else is freaked out, and we get a patented Sam Worthington. Yeah! Um, yeah. <laughs> It's, but, a, but an elongated one. Yeah, he he says no. He's like, ah! yeah. It's a it's a Vader no, except not as um not as it's it's a little higher, a little no! sharper. Um, no! Yeah. No! Um, Shut up, Sam. <laughs> well, while he's trying to cope with what's going on, we get a quick scene of uh, Kyle and Star in this fucking like uh, essentially the slaughterhouse. Where uh, Kyle's kind of trying to comfort Star, and then he gets picked up out of the line because one of the Terminators recognizes him in the database. Right. Don't they look down and see just blood all over the fucking place, like dried up blood? Yeah, and like one dude tries to escape and he just gets fucking mowed down. Like, where were you going, pal? Right? Kyle hides a piece of fucking rebar up his sleeve, and then they like pluck him and they separate him and Star, and he like gets put in a in a his own separate like uh, jail cell. Right. We go back to the human headquarters. Yeah, this is where the uh, the conversation you guys just talked about happened, where he's talking to he's talking to his wife. Yeah. I mean, a, a point of contention though, like as much as John is is freaked out by this guy, he's also he doesn't know how to feel because he's like kind of like. 
he doesn't he doesn't really know how to feel about this this Terminator unit having a conscience and, and convinced that it's not actually a bad guy or, yeah. or or a Terminator I guess I should say he thinks he's trying to trick him because he's like oh you know Kyle Reese like I have to go save Kyle Reese he's in Skynet you need to go and you need to help me and Christian Bale's like fuck, fuck you man right because he he reveals to he reveals to John that he knows where he is and nobody believes him right he does make a good point though he's like if I wanted to kill Kyle Reese I would have done it two days ago when I yeah exactly and I do like when he also says like he's like if I let you go you'll kill everybody and he's like the only if you let me go the only person I'll kill is you because I don't give a <laughs> shit about you <laughs> well, well while Bale's like talking to his wife uh, Commons like just t- doing the fucking target practice on Marcus's chest oh this is so mean spirited I love it oh yeah so Blair comes up and she's He's like, yeah, John needs to speak to you. He's like, yeah, what about it? And then she kind of shoots Marcus, too, to kind of prove that she's not fucking around. And so Common leaves. And then, of course, she fucking breaks him out. Yeah. I do like that when Common shoots him, he screams in agony. And then when Blair shoots him, he's like, fucking whatever. <laughs> like, <he's- laughs> Is this what I've come to? Yeah. yeah. This is this is my fucking existence, and I hate it. And this has been uh, existentially crushing. But go ahead. <laughs> Keep firing. I love this because she just pulls the fucking the, the lever, and he just falls to the fucking ground at the bottom of this pit. <laughs> this fucking <laughs> Buffalo Bill pit. She's like, what do you want? You're a robot. <laughs> Lo- put the lotion on your skin. And then she jumps down there. No, she rep- Pell's down there like a fucking badass, okay? Yeah. She grabs a chain and Indiana Jones her way down there. And she they like they're like going out through this like fucking tunnel and they see him and her uh going out through this tunnel and Common shoots a fucking RPG at them. Yeah. And he like and he like covers her so she doesn't get burned, even though she totally would have got burned. At least her hair would have got singed <laughs> off. Well, one of the other resistance members goes, Oh, Blair's down there. He's like, She picked her side. Yep, fuck her. Goodbye. Which they don't ever come back to. No. But okay, sure. And then this is just like a montage of them like getting out of the camp dude yeah <laughs> she has this fucking spool of wire she throws out and all the fucking minds magnetized to it and explode i thought that was cool yeah so then they're they're running through like this destroyed yard and it kind of culminates on this scene where blair puts on the fucking jacket that uh marcus has been wearing to fool all the resistance members yeah they like shoot a f- they shoot another rpg and it like misses them and there's a big cloud of smoke right right and then like marcus fucking splits and uh they flip they flip over the body and it's her in the jacket. Yep. Yeah, and then cut to Marcus is fleeing on foot like across this little body of water like a little river or stream nearby. He gets on a he gets on a fucking motorbike and like hops yeah. this hops this fucking uh uh bar- barricade. Well then, you know, Bale goes after him on the helicopter with the fucking machine gun. <laughs> It's pretty intense, man. I, I I don't know. Maybe they, they, they set off like a, a set of explosions, almost like a carpet bomb trying to hit this guy. Dude. It looks like he napalms the forest. Like this thing fucking goes up. He lights up a fucking city block worth of forest. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, fuck you, Terminator. I mean, they take the helicopter, lower to the ground to kind of see if he's still alive. And they get close to the water, and then these fucking hydro bots start coming out and start attacking the helicopter. Dude, it's fucking cool. One goes through the fucking windshield and kills the co-pilot. Yep. One gets dragged into water. You never see him again. He gets turned into just a big cloud of blood. Um, John obviously is fighting them off, and as this helicopter is starting to sink into the water, he makes a break for the shore. Um... Starts getting attacked by these things, and as one is about to pounce on him, Marcus fucking catches it in yeah. midair and just fucking, yeah. Yeah, and then just k- kills it with his fucking bare hands. It's fucking cool. Um, at this point, he's been shot at, he's been uh, exploded twice, uh, he's been burned, so now he's got the, the Terminator look where half of his, not, I wouldn't say half, but like a good portion of his upper face is all kind of burned away. And it looks good. Yeah. The CG looks good. I love the way his... Uh, machinery looks like it's not like the uh, the standard Terminator like chrome skull. No, um, it's got different details to it and everything like that. Like it has different surface material. It's a different model altogether. He's a proto. He's a prototype. So yeah, it's it's not quite as bulky, so it looks more streamlined. Well, then John, he he's ready to blow him away, but he is just like kind of interested in this idea that Marcus knows where Kyle is, so he gives him a communicator because Marcus says, "Hey, you know, you want to find Kyle Reese, like." I'll help you, but if you don't, well, you just if you kill me, you're never gonna find the guy. So, you know, Bale gives him a communicator and he's like, if you can find him, fucking send me the coordinates and I'll be there. Right. Yeah. And Marcus is like, I don't know who did this to me, but I would like to find out why. It ends with Connor just screaming in kind of comedic fashion. He's like, What are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the only person who can get him into fucking 
Skynet headquarters anyway. Yeah. So there's that too. Like, I don't even know what the fuck, like, what did John think he was going to do when he showed up at fucking Skynet's door? Fucking waltz right in? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to negotiate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then Marcus says, I don't know. And he swims away. <laughs> See ya. They have, they have this super quick scene where Blair's being interrogated. And after like one question, she's like, I didn't see a machine. I saw a man. And then John Connor was just like, all right, you're free to go. She's like, oh. Oh, oh, okay, sure, okay, sh- yeah. I, I, uh, I may have, uh, <laughs> I may have goofed, you can go. And then fucking, uh, Bale gets on the, um, the horn with Ironside again, and he's like, you can't fucking blow it up, all right? Like, Kyle Reese is in there, Kyle Reese is key to our salvation. TM. Yeah. You can't blow it up. They've got my dad. I mean, they've got prisoners. They got my young dad in there. If he dies, I die. Everybody dies. And Ironside's like, fuck you. And he hangs up the phone on him. <laughs> well, no, he doesn't just hang up. He's like, we have we have this all planned. This is a coordinated attack. He's like, you know, you can't, you're not in charge. You don't make the shots. And, and Connor fucking argues with him. He's like, you know what? You're relieved of your position. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he hangs up on Connor and Common and all his fucking resistance fighters are just like, yeah, you know, that last part of the transmission didn't come in clear. Yeah, I didn't hear that last part. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he's, he's breaking up. Hey, oh, yeah. Bale has this fucking line. I know I've said this a few times in this episode, but like, Bale has some great lines in this movie. He goes, if we stay the course, we're all going to be dead. And he, and he, I love when he, I love here because he gets back on the horn again and he's, and he's talking to all the resistance fighters, and he's like, look, there's going to be attack at dawn because Michael Ironside's a dick. But listen, <laughs> you got to not do it until I get in there and do this mission and save this guy and save these civilians. And he's like, or else, what's the difference between us and the machines? And like, what are we fighting for? I just thought that was a good message to have. Yeah, I like it a lot. Because it's just like, you're right. Like, if you're just going to blow the place up, like, what what is yeah. the point? Yeah, because Michael Ironside's like, oh, a few casualties, that's war. A few casualties? Did you know how many fucking, there's like fucking over 200 <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah, thousands. Yeah, and like compared to how much of humanity is left, like that's a fucking rich reserve of people in that building. That's a good chunk. That's a, that's a society building number in there. Ah, fuck them. They're all Democrats. <laughs> Stupid liberals. Um, I do like that it shows you that, like, within the military infrastructure, everyone's like, prophecy, prophecy. But, like, for the people who are out there in the midst of it, like, John is this, like, beacon of hope. So all of them are like, yeah, fuck yeah, we'll just wait for the lot to do the attack. Whatever, it's fine. Right. But John talks to him in a way that gives them hope. Yeah. You know, like, don't give up. Keep fighting. We're all in this together. We got to stick together, you know? Dude, he's been practicing these speeches since the end of fucking Equilibrium when he gave that speech. (laughs) He's got this shit down pat by now. He is father. I mean, technically. Then he has to drop. You know, I like the Kyle Reese referencing his line from the original. I'm totally into. This is the one time I was like, all right, that was a little much. He goes to leave, and Bryce Dallas Howard says, "What am I going to tell uh, the other resistance fighters about you? That now that you're now that you're leaving, what, what am I going to tell them?" He goes, "I'll be back," and then he like fucking marches off. Boom, 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 boom. I, I mean, it's fine. I don't mind. It's fine. It's just like the one time I was rolling my eyes in this film. I'm sure, some of Warner Bros. is like, "We read the script, and we're wondering where I'll be back is." You gotta put "I'll be back." It's a fucking Terminator movie. They're not going to get it unless you put the I'll be back in there. They won't even know it's a Terminator movie, even though we call the Terminator. Uh, he, he heads towards Skynet. He steals one of these motor tor- Terminators. He fucking lures it in by playing some Guns N' Roses, for God's sakes. Oh, dude, it's, this is fucking You Could Be Mine from part two, when he's on his fucking bike with with Butnick ah. from, from, uh, from uh, 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 Salute You Shorts. Oh, that's right. Yes, I thought this had some, Same song. some callbacks to that to, to kid John Connor, especially the way he fucking hacks this thing. He rips off the panel, he sticks some shit into it. Like, Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Holy shit. It's fucking cool, man. He fucking kicks up that GNR, coaxes out this fucking motorcycle Terminator, busts his ass with, like, a fucking trip wire. Then he, like, like Connor said, he pops him open and fucking sticks the fucking credit card trick in him and, like, hacks him. Yeah. And then, like, pops his eye out, like, the, the eye sensor part of it, and then he just has a fucking sweet-ass Terminator motorcycle that he drives to Skynet headquarters. With what I imagine is a very uncomfortable seat. Probably. I don't think there even is a seat. Like, is that the Terminator's, like... <laughs> no, it's just... <laughs> It's just Terminator spine. Like, you're, you're just sitting on its back. I mean, it can't be that far. Even though Sam Worthington is a Terminator, like, even if he ran full speed, like, he got there pretty quick. <sighs> Who knows how he got there? That's fine. I don't mind that. Kind of like Eddie at the end of uh, Trick or Treat. He just was, like, walking all night. Yeah, right? I mean, we got, well, he got it right. He hitchhiked. He hitchhiked. Well, okay. He, he makes it clear to the other robots that he's a robot. 
So, I mean, he could have got picked up by something. I don't know. Yeah, because he steps out and he kind of presents himself and he doesn't get shot at. He does just walk right in the front door, basically. <laughs> yeah, he identifies himself and then, like, walks in and then just fucking disarms all of the outside security of the perimeter. Oh, yeah, because he gets in and he, he basically syncs up with Skynet it's, itself. Yeah, he, like, plugs right the fuck in and he he uh, he finds uh, Kyle Reese's coordinates and says that to John. And then he, like, finds his backstory, and then, like, he sees Judgment Day. This is where we find out that, like, Helena Bottom Carter's company was, like, bought by Cyberdyne. Right, okay. And then that's how they kind of merged, and I, I guess how her genetics projects got mixed into, you know, creating cyborgs and shit with Cyberdyne, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. And at this point in the film, I hadn't seen this since I saw it in theaters. I think I said that earlier also. But I was just like, all right, why the fuck is Skynet just, like, letting this guy turn all the fucking defenses off? Like, are you kidding me right now? And then I was like, oh. Yeah, it's the perfect plan. Got me. Perfect plan. He sees Judgment Day in the the records and shit, and he's like, Jesus Christ, what happened? Um, And then uh, Helena Bottom Carter uh, appears on a giant screen. And it's not really Serena Kogan, the character she was playing, but it is Skynet... Giving him a face that he could recognize to talk to. Yeah, and right before this, they fucking, they they repair him up like fucking the Lion and the Wizard of Oz. They're like, snip, snip, yeah, snip, snip, there. <laughs> Couple of tra la las Oh, yeah, they, it, yep, they fix all of his fucking skin and he gets, he gets brand new clothes. This is how we repair your skin at Skynet fucking headquarters. And well, at least he gets a real heart, unlike the Tin Man. And a brain, too. He made it off better than both of those guys. This is true. And courage, he gets it all. And he's got a whole heap of courage. Yeah, he gets them all. But he didn't get the ruby slippers. And well, he's got, he's got a Terminator exoskeleton. I think he's gonna be okay. I think he's good. <laughs> keep, his, keep his shiny <laughs> shoes. I'm a fucking robot. Um, so uh, him and uh, essentially what is like the fate. Now I was I kind of agree on this because me and Arlen were talking about this movie that we don't really like when Skynet has a face because it makes it less scary. But in this instance, I think it kind of works because it is kind of being it's. It's kind of talking down to him. It's almost like a demon. It, it turns into whatever makes him comfortable. Like, it turns into John Connor at one point, turns into Kyle Reese at one point. Well, because it shows him, you know, I don't want to jump too ahead, but we're getting into it. Connor kind of, in, every time I say Connor, I'm just thinking, like, Connor's in this fucking movie. Dude, this was <laughs> distracting when I was watching the film because they just kept saying Connor. I'm like, I've, this is so weird. I keep... What? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> ah! Um, when he finds out where Kyle Reese is being, you know, kept, he sends the information to John Connor and John breaks in and he does like, he breaks in doing the, uh, the, the ATM thing again to get in the door and a fucking, yeah, it's not a T-800, but it looks like a T-800 is patrolling the fucking area, kind of misses him by like a fraction of a second. It's a T-600. He's inside. He starts opening up the prison and uh, letting everybody out. And while he's in there, like Helen Bottom Carter, Skynet starts talking to, Sam Worthington explaining, like, ah, yeah, you know, uh, you're an infiltrator unit. Like, you did everything according to plan. And he's like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you know, you might not have known you were doing it, but uh, you were. And they kind of play back scenes in the film where it's like, yeah, we uh, we were looking for Kyle Reese and nobody could find him. And you brought him right to us. And uh, we couldn't find John Connor anywhere, and you let him right to us. Yeah, the East Skynet even says, like, we've been looking for John for years. Yeah, and I like, it's it is kind of... Like, it seems like a happy accident that Skynet's like, oh, well, fuck yeah, it worked out for us, because I don't know if, yeah. like, because if I'm Skynet and I'm relying on this kind of prototype hybrid machine human, like, the free will element is very risky. That's why it doesn't work, right? Yeah, well then, like, eventually, like, but it kind of did, because in Marcus's own decision making, he kind of did lead everything, you know, all the convenient pieces to Skynet. Which, right. And I do like that Skynet admits, like, yeah, we fucking tried this so much. We tried killing John Connor over and over and over again. And, like, you just brought him to our doorstep. <laughs> we just rolled the fucking dice on you. So what happened? I feel like some people looked at this and thought it was shitty writing. But to me, I thought it was really, really creative and really smart because it just plays so. out this whole idea that, you know, he was doing this against his own will. And they kind of show how he has this chip in his head that's, yeah. you know, subconsciously forcing him to do their bidding. And also, they kind of reveal the whole thing about this signal that was found by the resistance. That's like, yeah, we fucking planted that there. Like, we knew what we were doing. You really think we would just leave that there, like, by happenstance? It's a fucking fleece so that they play it so they know exactly where the fucking headquarters is. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking they fucking nuke Michael Ironside. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. Dude, yeah, they send an HK to this fucking place and just blow it up immediately. <laughs> they shoot a giant nuke into the fucking ocean and just fucking 86 this sub. I do love the, uh, the, the Russian uh, commander down there. He's like, he looks 
looks at the fucking the, the radar or sonar. He's like, we have just killed ourselves. Yeah, th- that moment of clarity. Marcus kind of uh, kind of snaps back and then uh, rips the chip out of the back of his head. Which, it, like, fine. But also, if I'm Skynet, like, someone would be like, hey, why'd you put that there? Take it out. Listen, like, we have to also remember, like, you know, I'm not saying you're saying this, Connor, but, like... When people get up in their own ass about how Terminator doesn't make any sense because if they could just send it back in time, why aren't they just, like, killing the first man or whatever or killing, you know, Sarah Connor when she's a baby or her parents? But, like, we have to remember, and I'm, I'm saying that generally, not necessarily us, that this is still a science fiction film. This isn't, like, supposed to be super realistic. Yeah, right. So I, I, I can, you know, let certain things go if they service the plot, and it still fits the universe that we're in, if that makes sense. They also explain that in T2. Yeah, and Skynet is uh, shown to be fallible. Like, just because it's an AI doesn't mean it doesn't make uncalc- like decisions that it bl- kind of blows up in its face. And I maybe keeping a prototype of this guy around was probably a bad idea and maybe they weren't even considering using him cuz he was he was just sitting in some fucking underground facility dormant she even says uh well she said helena uh skynet says that like our decisions were too calculated and that like we had to do something radical which was him which you know he's not a computer he's not making calculated decisions he's got right. human emotions yeah. and all that kind of stuff uh just real quick uh they do mention that in T2 though like how they found Sarah Connor and when to send the 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 uh T800 back to kill her um because after judgment day happened everything was eradicated pretty much like all the records and shit and like databases and stuff right okay oh i remember hearing about this yeah so like so exact time travel was really fucking hard because all the all the information was gone so they had to guesstimate by like john's age and age and shit like the the time of like his conception or whatever yeah marcus marcus uh, rips the chip out of his head and then in slow motion picks up a stool and throws it to the screen shattering the skynet face um, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then he uh, hops to the floor to this like lower section and walks up to a dead resistance fighter. And Charnitsky walks over and goes, "I can't let you take his clothes again, son. <laughs> <laughs> can't let you take the man's jacket, son." Because Sam Worthington's character does spend a lot of time in this movie taking people's clothes. He he actually, while this is all going on, it's kind of intercut because it's showing how like he basically led John there to the slaughter, and you know, John he goes to where. You know, Skynet is saying Kyle Reese is being kept, but it's a lie, and it's actually where the fucking original T-800 prototype is. It's uh, fucking cool, man. Rad. Like, because th- there's a quick moment where, like, Connor leans in, and the door fucking gets blasted out, and you don't even see what it is first. You see a giant fucking silhouette. Yeah. You definitely get that stinger, though. Mm-hmm. You do. Um... The door fucking flies open. He looks up, and it is a Arnold Schwarzenegger in CGI recreation looking much better than I anticipated. He doesn't look bad. He looks fine. He looks like he did. He looks waxy, but that's just the, the technology of the, the time. And, like, th- that that shot looks 1,000 times better than the rock CGI head in The Mummy Returns, okay? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, my God, yeah, no doubt. So in terms of recreating a real person's face, this was really good. And Well, and like we talked about, they, they revisit this idea in Genesis, but I feel like this was kind of, like, the best version of this idea i agree well because because this is a treat like it's there for a little bit and then the skin gets blown off like a minute later right and again this is the prototype t800 so this isn't even the t800 that goes back in time this is just one off the assembly line right because they're just getting built now and it starts fucking ragdolling john around this room (laughs) the t600 like abducts kyle from his cell and like puts him on some kind of weird table and then like Kyle's able to free himself and, like, jumps up and, like, star distracts the T-600, and then he takes that rebarb and fucking jams it in the back of his neck, like, callback from earlier. Yeah, and then it starts going haywire and starts shooting his machine gun fucking everywhere. Yeah. And I like how those two separate encounters kind of start on opposite ends of one big room, and then they meet in the middle, and all of a sudden you have all your central pieces in one spot. Yeah. And then, oh man, this is so great, fucking, the, the Arnold T-800 walks up on these fucking people, and, like, uh... John Connor shoots him with a fucking grenade launcher and, like, burns all his skin off. Dude, but then he grabs he grabs the T-600 and just, like, rips the upper torso off it. You're, you are annoying me. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, fuck you. I'm better than you. Bye. You can't aim. You're missing everyone. John Connor's my mission. Fuck off. Uh, and then a really good fucking uh, brawl that kind of has 
not too many, but just enough little visual echoes of Terminator 2. Yeah. Two and one, I would argue, because it kind of is reminiscent of two as far as, like, I mean, two and one both kind of end in factories, different type of factories, but it has, like, that ending vibe of the first two films, for sure. Of, like, an industrial complex. Right. Yeah. It totally works. It's it's fine. Sam Worthington gets kind of, I think he gets backhanded away. He gets, he gets uh, incapacitated. Um, and John, like, blows a hole in the fucking floor, and they drop down to this, like, assembly uh, area where there's a bunch of T-800 heads that are getting ready to be put onto bodies. Yeah, and they're like, holy shit, there's, mili- there's like, hundreds of them. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't even know, dude. I love the sequence because I don't think we've ever seen Terminator get built before. No. And it's cool, too, because, again, like, this is 2018. Yeah. It's not 2029 yet. Like, there aren't legions of T-800s just, like, out and about. Places some importance on this facility because if this is where they're, they're you know, if this is the birthplace of this model, then destroying it after getting these people out becomes paramount. Like, you have to. Sure. Well, you know, John, he also finds kind of sitting on a table. Well, actually, Star finds them, and then John kind of points out these uh, fuel cells, and he, he goes, yeah, these are the power batteries for the T-800s. They're, each one's as powerful as a nuclear bomb. Yeah, because they're driven, like, by nuclear power, I'm pretty sure. Which I think was, like, a big deal in the third film. I think they kind of go into that. I don't. I think less so in one and two. <sighs> Question fucking Mark. Isn't that how, that's how he beats the TX, isn't he? He drops his fuel cell into her mouth? Well, he's an 850, to be fair. Well, yeah, the T850. Um, oh, I'm, I'm He's sorry. a T850. <laughs> he, 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 like, opens his stomach, and he's like, here's a fucking thing for later. Here's foreshadowing. Here it is. Yeah, my Optimus Prime energy. Yeah, what? I got the all spark. I got the all spark in my stomach. Here you go, Kaplui. So there is also a a fucking cool shot, um, where they're down this assembly complex, like in uh, these fucking robots are getting built behind them and everything. The elevator starts lowering, and they think it's going to be the T-800 that's coming after them. Yeah. Marcus, though, I thought it was on the elevator, right? It's implied that he he sent it down to them, but you don't ever find out. Yeah, and then behind them, there is a Terminator hanging on the assembly line like it's get, it's getting moved along. It's a complete body. And they, they do show it a few times, but then finally when they go back for the one last shot of it, it moves, and behind it is the actual T-800 that's very much awake, and it just walks up and starts throwing people around. Oh, yeah. Well, John, he drops the detonator... And uh, he brings Star and, and uh, Kyle Reese to the elevator, and they're trying to get away. And uh, John kind of says, no, I got to finish this. And, and they head up, and Kyle Reese is like, who are you? I don't even know who you are. He's like, I'm John Connor. <laughs> they have like a, <laughs> <they> have like <laughs> a back and forth stare. The teen hundred's incapacitated right now because Kyle shoots him in the fucking chest with the grenade launcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's sick. I thought the, I thought he was done. I was like, "Oh shit!" Kyle fucking blew his ass away. No, I like this whole fight sequence because while it's not heavy with, like, there's not a million moves being done here. Um, no, it's a lot of like knock the thing down and put some space between me and the thing. But that's what it was like in the first movie. But it's fine because it works, and it, you know what? It's better when it's not overly flashy. It just feels more real. And you know what? Having John constantly getting thrown around this thing and then actually selling the fact that he's being thrown around by a fucking murder robot is awesome. He's taking damage, and he looks like he's taking damage. He's limping around the whole time. He's, like, just clutching his body because this thing's just punching him left and right. Well, dude, Marcus, he comes down, and he starts fighting the Terminator while John rigs the explosives, being the uh, fuel cells. And uh, I guess the Terminator locates Marcus's one weakness, his human heart, and he just fucking just hits it once really hard, and Marcus dude, is done. he fucking pops this dude in the heart, and he just drops like a fucking sack of potatoes. What's then like, all right, well, T-100, I guess, it, after seeing this movie, I always wonder what would happen if you had, a, like, a Marcus model against a Terminator one-on-one. Like, I'm not sure which one of those would come out on top. I think I think the Terminator might still win, but it would be a close fight. Yeah. I mean, you definitely get a T2 situation there. Uh, well, neither of them, they're both like pretty much endoskeletons, right? So it's like a it's like I don't know. It kind of could be like a stalemate there, I think. Or like it could just be the ad- particular advantage of one like picking something up and like smashing the other one's fucking legs or some shit. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, well, well you know, this thing takes like a massive fucking uh cement block and smashes him in the fucking chest with it. Which is a callback to the T-1000 ramming Arnold with whatever the fuck that thing was in T-2. An eye beam right into his fucking head. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Like, over and over again. <laughs> yeah, and this thing's just ramming fucking Marcus in the chest, but then finally is like, oh, you have a heart! Boom! Just punches him. Well, then John, he kind of gets away from the Terminator, and he's trying to get the fuck out of Dodge, 
But uh, he hears, you know, Anton Yelchin yelling out for help, and he kind of turns the corner, and it's that classic Terminator move where he's doing the voice manipulation. It's fucking great, dude. John, he puts more distance between this thing, but he also observed a uh, a giant storage uh, thing for, like, just fucking molten liquid metal. Oh, yeah, man. And uh, this thing advances on him, and John shoots it. He aims his grenade launcher past it and shoots the this whatever the fuck this thing is uh for like a forge yeah it's like a, it's like a it's like a smelter i think or something or forge yeah and so all this fucking this piping hot fucking inferno hot liquid metal comes out and covers a terminator he gets child's play too except he's not like <laughs> <laughs> there's charles lee ray there he is so then john also sees a pipe shooting what i can only assume is like fucking nitrogen uh so he shoots that too and then freezes the Terminator in place. And as it's freezing, it reaches forward and it starts to... It's still kind of reaching for him and John's like, Do it, you son of a bitch! Um, and reaches forward and with its fucking smoldering hands, scratches down his face around his eye. And those are the scars he has in Terminator 2. I think that's fucking awesome. Um, I thought that was so great because not only are they the scars from Terminator 2, but it's like the makeup is perfect. I was like, that's them. Like, it's so like... That that image of John from part two is like so burned in my head, like those p- specific scars. They try to do that in Genesis, but it looks like dog shit. Yeah, and again, it's something where if you're not really thinking about it, or in your case, you went back and revisited it recently, like you may not even think about it. It's yeah. just a, it's just a quick injury he sustains. It was so satisfying though, like watching these all like back to back and seeing that. I'm like, oh fuck, that was sick. So then he comes over and he tries to uh, resuscitate Marcus. It's not working. He's like fucking slamming on his chest, um, which. I don't think it's ever worked in, in the history of reality. Especially to a fucking cyborg. Like, what are you doing? You're gonna break your hand. He's trying to wake him up because this Terminator is slowly breaking out of this, like, frozen position it's in. Uh, so eventually John just grabs, like, just wires. <laughs> just whatever, whatever the fuck, unplugs something and then shocks Marcus back to uh, consciousness. <laughs> And as soon as he shocks him back to life, the fucking T-800 sticks a goddamn piece of rebar right through John's chest. Yeah. I had no idea. I, t- I totally forgot that happened. And I was like, oh, what? Yep. Um, when the first time I saw it, I thought they killed him uh, in that sequence. Yeah. I thought he was done. And then Marcus fucking hops up and like sticks another piece of metal like into the T-800's head and just like pops it off. Oh, no, no. He takes the one from John's chest. Okay. Which... Which you sh- which you shouldn't do because you'll just make him bleed faster. Um, because I went back and rewatched that second. He breaks off the end of it that's sticking out of John, and then attacks the T eight hundred with it and like sticks it fucking in the like the columns where its neck support is and just fucking twists its head off. <laughs> fucking rips its head right off. Oh, it's so cool. Um, and then uh, he goes over to John, who's very clearly dying. Yeah. Uh, this thing went right through the center of his chest. You don't say it hit as hard, but you're assuming that there's some damage there. Um, so he scoops up John, and uh, they fucking they get to a helicopter, and on this helicopter is Marcus, uh, Star, Kyle, uh, uh, shit. What was um, Bryce Dallas Howard's name again? Claire. Uh, but then Star hands the detonator to John, um, and he gets the the luxury of blowing up this fucking facility, which is where the T-800s were being created, as we mentioned, which is a significant victory for humans. It's a huge victory. Um... But they won the battle, not the war. So, but Common says, like, we can't, we have to land, like, real soon because John's in bad shape. Um, and they kind of cut to this medical tent that they've set up, and John's hooked up to an IV, and everyone's looking really sad because he's essentially going to die. Um, his heart took damage in the stab. Also, like, God knows what kind of internal injuries he got from being thrown around by a fucking robot. Man, he should be dead. I mean, let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. But it's John Connor, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, he has, he has plot armor a mile thick up until the next film. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck that movie. <laughs> and then, like, uh, John, like, makes Reese, like, an official member of the... He makes him an official member of the Resistance. He gives him his jacket. Yeah, but um, Marcus steps forward, and he's like, he can have my heart. And he's like, you know, he deserves a second chance, and I got mine. And this is, this is the chance for me to do something that is, you know... An ultimate act of good. And then the, my favorite part, one of my favorite parts of the film is right here because it's like the ultimate callback to the beginning of the film when he's getting the lethal injection for doing like bad shit. And now he's getting uh, an injection to go under to do something good. Yeah, it's very poignant. I like Star walking up and grabbing his robot hand too. Yeah, I like that too. But it, it, they do this. They do all the same shots from the beginning 
when they're giving him lethal injection. It's it's very cool. And then like again, well yeah, he kisses Blair, but it's a consensual thing. Right. It's so cool because like in, in the beginning one, he like passes out and he sees Helena Bonham Carter like with a light above her head and he just like falls asleep. And it's kind of the same thing here, you know, he just like falls asleep like it's so weird. Like you're living this one life and then you fall asleep and then you're thrust into this and then you just go back to sleep again. But well, you're dead, but you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, he ends up saving uh, John Connor's life who then uh, signs the movie off with um, uh, the, the... Sarah Connor there is speech. No future. Yeah, there is no future but the one we make. Yep, there is no fate but what we make. There is no dark fate. There is no dark fate, TM. <laughs> unless we need to make more money. Which apparently they didn't. <laughs> and that's Terminator Salvation. And I feel like now is the time to drop in some fucking story bombs about how this movie has three fucking endings okay all right so that was the best ending i'm pretty sure right yes what's well, the most hopeful one because this is supposed to kick off a trilogy of films yes that's right i forgot about that in one ending john doesn't show up until the end of the film and assists in the attack on skynet and is mortally wounded and as he's dying he basically says like it's more important for people to to think that John Connor is still around than to actually have me still around. Oh no, that's like a father thing. So they have Marcus basically they they attach John Connor's skin to Marcus's exoskeleton and, uh, and, he, huh? and he becomes he fills the role of John Connor. All right, thank God they didn't do that. Yeah, that sucks. The other ending was that they do that. They they switch it over, but Marcus sits up and has been reactivated by Skynet and kills everyone in the room, including Bryce Dallas Howard, Blair, Kyle, everyone. <laughs> Did they film this? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, so which is the theatrical ending? Theatrical is the, the one we saw where he just flies off towards the sunset. Oh, okay. Um, there's a whole bunch of shit that was supposed to be this movie. There was a whole extra plot involving the hybrids, and that was actually supposed to be the what Salvation was referencing, and that there was this whole other project by Skynet that they stopped working on because they're like whoa 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 you can't just unleash a bunch of fucking free willed terminators out there like you, you we won't be able to control them yeah and then you'll have a whole nother faction that's warring with you <laughs> i i am just glad that salvation is essentially sam worthington's character salvation going from yes. this fucking guy who killed two cops and his brother to uh, I basically help save humanity. I like how it's about him and not... See, this is how you do that story. Well, I'll get that to my final thought, but like, this is how you do that story where John Connor is there. Like, There's elements of him, and he's there. But really, Marcus is the hero here. Yeah, he's the secondary protagonist in this film. Um, but this movie had a very troubled production history. Um, before we actually even went to filming, Christian Bale approached Big G and basically said, um, so I think you kind of suck. <laughs> And I don't know if you can actually make this movie <laughs> in not so many words. Um, James Cameron, I believe, uh, was asked if he approves of this movie, and he said, fuck no. Oh, fuck you, James Cameron. Well, this this is this is Avatar-era James Cameron. Look at the look at the movies he, he has signed off on. So, like... <laughs> Dark fate. I mean, the man's very rich. I guess he's got that going for him. Yeah, he was like... like Because they peppered him in the Genesis ads, and he's like, and then I start to see something familiar. I'm like, shut up, George. Like, <laughs> this is... This is the next this, uh, this is going to be great I, I love this new terminator movie uh there was a like the production was troubled and like uh mick g is basically put in movie jail afterwards and the critics didn't really like this uh it made 300 million at the box office i think its budget was 200 million well, at least it made money yeah it made money i wouldn't call it a bomb but it's like, not a bomb yeah but i think because it didn't break the bank and because Halcyon Productions filed for bankruptcy like six months later the fucking trilogy died so there you go and that's how we got Genesis well god damn what a shame what a shame so where are we putting this guys this is a regular episode by the way yeah um fucking shelf this was on my shelf I love this movie uh I remember being stupidly excited the first time I saw a trailer for this on the big screen um uh like I said, the music by Nine Inch Nails, the visuals, all this stuff. The fact that it's in the fucking, the war setting. This is what we've been asking for since the fucking robot stepped into human skull in the beginning of Terminator 2. Um, I like the look of the world, like all the, the extra Terminators. I love the Marcus character. I think he's awesome. Uh, Christian Bale elevates fucking anything he does because he's Christian Bale. Uh, and I think this is like probably the only movie McGee has made that I will really enjoy. Uh, and... 
it's the only movie in this fucking exhausted, fatigued franchise that tried to do anything new or fresh or innovative. And I'm really sad that we didn't get to see more of it. Um, I, this movie is aesthetically pleasing. I like it from uh, a writing perspective, an actor perspective, uh, an action perspective. I love this movie, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's it's a lot less like Clash of the Titans, which I know is a big fucking flaming terror that I just kind of get some you know giddiness out of. But no, I genuinely love this movie, and it's on my shelf. I love this film. I'm right there with you, man. This is shelf movie for sure. Um, I remember seeing this and just not being receptive to it at the beginning because, you know, I, I get it, right? Yeah, and I will add that I was initially let down by it but didn't hate it because it didn't quite live up to the expectations I had in my head. Right. Well, again, like, we, y- you got Terminator and you got T2 in your fucking head, and this is just not those films, right? So when you're going into it, you're like, oh, this is going to, you know... You're, you're expect yes, you're expecting a certain level of 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 Terminator to be there. Um, I guess that's akin to to the for, to those two movies. Um, but I remember watching this and not hating it, but also being like, I didn't think it was that great. Coming back years later to this, um, and sitting down and watching all the films back to back to back to back, with the exception of the the latest one, not all the way, but everything else. Uh, you know, one through Genesis all the way. Um, this is Terminator Three. Okay, this is there's there's Terminator, Terminator T Two, Judgment Day, and then fucking Terminator Salvation, and that's it. That's that's it. At least until I see Dark Fate, that's still you know to be, to be seen. But that is the trilogy for me. Um, this film has all of the great things that. I like from T1 and T2, but does its own thing completely. And, um, you know, I heard people say, if if you look at T3 as its own thing, it's good. And it's just not true. (laughs) It's not true. How could you separate it? You can't, like, you can't separate it, first of all. Second of all, like, even if you took it out and just put it in a vacuum, it's still a piece of shit. Like... It doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know what kind of, it, I don't like the way that it portrays itself or carries itself. And if you're into that, great. But I, I think it has no business being a Terminator movie, like, at all. Um, and this is truly its own thing without any familiar faces. I mean, we get Arnold like a little Easter egg kind of thing, you know, like a little teaser taste at the end. Um, but it's short lived, but it's like, Oh shit, that's cool because it's a prototype of the one that goes back and, you know, goes to kill Sarah Connor. It's not the one, right? Right. And you know, there's no familiar faces in this and it exceeds, uh, it succeeds at everything it sets out to do. Right. So we're taking a tire. It's already tired at this point. Okay. After T3 came out that, I don't think that did real well, or I remember people not really liking that either, um, or that was split rather. Um, and then I remember people really not liking this film. I guess because Arnold's not in it in any big presence. But like, this is the one of the. I think this is the only film sequel after T two that pulls it off in terms of creating a original story while still keeping elements from the main arc in a compelling way and telling it really well and in an impactful emotional uh display of 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 the characters that we do know and new ones um I don't know. The effects are fucking great. The atmosphere is great. The tone is great. That's something that's missing from T3 um just to you know just to kind of put a point on that for as far as sequels go like in succession here um it's just it's bleak to an extent but it's also hopeful it still it still leaves it open at the end like the war is not over um but it kind of is for me like again like this is this is a solid ending like if you had to make another terminator movie this would be it and then that's it just leave it alone um i said at the beginning of the episode that t2 was my definitive um closing to to the series i think one and two you get that extended cut of two that's it 
puts a nice fucking bow on it. That's all I need, right? But if I had to have another film, it would be Salvation, and that's it. I don't need any of the other shit. Uh, we also mentioned before, too, like, this series is just... We're, we're grasping at straws here. I, I just don't fucking need any more Terminator. We have plenty. We have all the stories that need to be told. I don't need fucking alternate timelines. I don't need trying to fucking put a spin on it or a what-if motherfucking movie. I just don't need it. And I certainly don't need any more Arnold or any more Linda Hamilton. They, 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 they did their arcs, and they were great. That's it. It's done. <laughs> um, but yeah, this film <laughs> is awesome. And I think that if people are skipping over, the, I've noticed that everybody was doing a marathon of term of the Terminator films, and I feel like a lot of people skipped over this one, and that was a big fucking mistake. If you went from T three to Genesis, you're fucking crazy. Go back, watch this film. <laughs> like, like people are like, "All oh, right, yeah, Salvation, yeah. Salvation is Salvation's the shitty movie." And I'm like, "I don't know, man. Fucking check yourself." Um, watch one and two. And then watch Salvation and tell me that it's not a great addition to that lore and those characters. Um, yeah, fucking shelf. Uh, I mean, it's kind of obvious it's going on the shelf. I don't, I don't really know uh, what else I can add to what Joe and Connor have already said here. But, uh, yeah, I 100% agree with Joe. Like, one, two, Salvation, that's it. Like, uh, you know, I haven't actually seen Salvation since I saw it in theaters, so this was, like, a cool movie to go back to after a long period of time. And, uh, you know, I remember seeing this in theaters and enjoying it at the time, so maybe I'm a fucking enigma uh, when it comes to Salvation. But, yeah, like, I, I don't get why people didn't like this film when it came out. And it's kind of funny, there's, like, this uh, bit of a running you know, thread here with Christian Bale where, you know, obviously some people feel strongly about these films like Equilibrium that we've done for the show and Reign of Fire. Like, there's obviously pockets of people out there that are like, wait, what are you talking about? I love that film. People didn't like this. But uh, so far on this on this show, we, we've kind of done these films that have that kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of have that stigma about them. But they're legitimately good films, and I think this is another one that people just, like Joe was kind of saying, just ignore because it's like, oh, that's the future one. But, like, also it's the one that, you know, James Cameron can sit there and say that he thinks it's horrible, but, like, it's the one concept that in interviews for years he was saying, yeah, if someone were to make another Terminator film, they should make one about the war. And then they fucking made it. Um, I love this film. I think it's really well done. I still think one and two... Uh, are better. No, uh, I sure, goes without saying because they're just they're fucking masterpieces in their own ways. And uh, I've seen one and two a ton, so you know I I don't remember every little detail. And like Joe, I I didn't rewatch them. I had planned to watch one and two before watching this, and I just never got around to it. Now I feel like after watching it, maybe I'll watch one and two to so do it a little backwards. But uh, I I don't know what else I could really say. Like yeah, shelf movie. It's uh. If you haven't seen it and you like the Terminator universe and you have that fatigue that Joe and Connor are talking about, but you want you still like the universe enough that you want something to uh, wet the uh, said palate, check it out. Like I, th- I don't think you'll be disappointed. And like Bale's great in this. Uh, I don't know Bale and, and Worthington are both great. Anton Yelchin, great. Uh, I, I don't know how many different ways we can say everyone in this movie is great. The effects are great. The story's, f- you know, I don't know. Maybe the story's not great, but it's very good. And uh, I, I don't know. There's not much I could really say that I disliked about this film. I don't think there's really anything except for Sam's scream. <laughs> yeah, there's little there's little things you can nitpick for I mean, a little well, bit. Sure. Um, but I don't really see this as a movie that's just like disastrous from start to finish. I don't get bad movie vibes from it at all. No, it's it's very it's very competently made, and it's very it's very moody, and it has. And I've said this like nine hundred times already on this, but it has a great atmosphere and tone to it, and it's just shot really fucking well. Somebody gave a shit when they made this, you know. And um, I don't mean to keep harping on it or coming back to it, but I want to make the point that T three is not a good film in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Um, it's not a good fucking movie. It's not a good movie to look at. It's it's lit like shit. It's shot like shit. The the uh, effects look like shit. The CG in that movie is atrocious. Uh, the acting is terrible. Uh, the script is terrible. It's bad. If you like it, that's fine. Good for you. But it's not a good movie. And like I love I love Ghoulies, and I know it's not a good movie, right? 
And I accept that. No, yeah, yeah. I like that we found one of the hills we're willing to die on. Fucking, dude, do it. <laughs> Fucking come the fuck at me, dude. It's not a good movie. I, I do want to just briefly, before we close out this episode, talk a little bit about Dark Fate. So if, if anyone listening to this... Uh, wants to see this film and doesn't want to be spoiled about it, I guess this is where you turn the episode off. But uh, yeah, there's one thing in particular I want to talk about because I did not see this film. I was excited about this film for a while. And, you know, I joke about Gears of War and Connor was talking about Mortal Kombat. But believe it or not, it did get me kind of hyped for Dark Fate. And uh, I, I was 100% sold on the film. And, you know, I saw people online on Facebook and on movie forums and stuff like that, you know, kind of split down the middle. Some people really love it. Some people really aren't into it at all. And uh, so, you know what, I just, you know, I fucking don't have the time to go see it. There's so many other movies out right now. Like, if I'm going to see a movie, it's going to be like The Lighthouse or fucking The Joker. It's not going to be Dark Fate. It's going to be Dr. Sleep, dude. Yeah, or Dr. There you go, Dr. Sleep. I just, you know, me and Joe a couple weeks ago and my, my girlfriend, we saw the fucking One Piece movie, Stampede. So, you know, there's a lot of shit out right now. Okay. Big spoilers. This is your last warning. Yeah. First fucking five minutes of this film, and I know this because I watch reviews, so don't come at me with fucking, you know, fangs out. I, you know. I watched it. I watched it with my own eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the end is... I get that some people, just not to keep harping on it, like Joe is saying with T3, but t- some people like T3 because it has that bleak ending where you couldn't prevent Judgment Day. It's not bleak. It's not bleak. Like, it's gonna happen anyway, but, like, that doesn't justify the other fucking 90 minutes of shit. Anyway, sorry. Sure. <laughs> but but Dark Fate opens with fucking Sarah Connor and Edward Furlong as a kid, John Connor, in, like, what, Guantanamo or some shit? Guatemala, I think, yeah. A fucking Terminator unit gets sent back in time and just... Sh- Connor puts it best. He fucking... He, he walks up to John Connor, who is... Still pint-sized CGI de-aged Edward Furlong and sticks a shotgun in his face and just blows the trigger. He fucking shoots this little boy buying a Mai Tai. Yeah. Right in the fucking chest. And then when he goes down, he overkills him and, like, shoots him again. Well, that that actually happens in the first film. Like, whenever he, whenever the Terminator kills a Sarah Connor, he just fucking puts, like, ten bullets in her. Yeah, um... So he just, he overkills what isn't even the hero of the series yet, but like the, the, you know, the, the hope of the series and just executes in the middle of some, some fucking bar and walks away. And that's it. And that to me is so cynical and so it's worse than alien three. I love alien three. It's really kind of, it's fucking mean spirited. Yeah. It's super mean spirited and I fucking hate it. And I get that. There is some internal urgency to get away from what was, you know, what, it, what is old is, you know, we're not going to do that anymore. We're trying to get away from that. Like, they even tried it in Genesis by, they even tried it in Genesis by making John Connor into a fucking robot. And this time they doubled down and fucking shot him as a child. This is the lightsaber right over the fucking shoulder, man. I only make the Alien 3 reference because I think Alien 3 is fine. But obviously that movie opens in a way where it's like they just shit on the end of 2 where it's like, yeah, they get away safe. And oh, wait, they crash land and they're all dead. Yes, and that's bleak. <laughs> It opens with a way that just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. I'm like, I'm sure if that's how the movie starts, I'm fucking good. It it upsets me and I don't want to see the movie. Yeah, I've heard Linda Hamilton is really good in this movie and, and I'm all for that. Like, I love Linda Hamilton. She can be a badass. But the other thing that drives me insane about this film, again, you know, if you haven't checked out yet, I'm sorry. But apparently this Stone Cold Killer fucking Terminator unit has a heart and feels bad that it killed John Carter. I'm sorry, what? And so it just starts sending text messages to fucking Sarah Connor when new Terminators show up to kill people saying, for John. And she goes and she kills Terminators. I didn't get there yet. And she finds out throughout the course of the film that this person that's sending these text messages to her is this Terminator that killed her son and he's he's fucking been humanized. Even though... If you go by the logic of this series, the first Terminator didn't have a soul. It was a fucking robot, and this is supposed to be the same kind of thing. Kyle describes them as emotionless, you know, feelingless, calculated killing machines who don't know how to do anything except for take out a target. P.S. Right, and the only reason why it was humanized in 2 was 1, it was sent back by the Resistance, and 2, John Connor fucking reprogrammed it yeah it had nothing to do with the resistance john connor took the fucking chip out and reprogrammed it to be more human if you're if if, if you're gonna make a movie about the terminator and you're already making all these logic jumps and you know like i said i guess some people are enjoying it I, i i'm not one of them but 
can you at least be a little consistent with the fucking lore, please? Right, and that just seems to fucking go right past people, and they're like, ah, whatever, it's not like the old one. I'm like, yeah, but there's fucking rules, man. Right. Right? I mean, this this comes back to the fucking whole Star Wars thing, but, like, I don't know, like, if you don't care about your characters, why the fuck should I? You know? Exactly, exactly. And that that... Once I found that out, and I mean, granted, I could have just not looked these spoilers up, and maybe that's on me, but, like, once I read this shit was in the film, I was checked out. I was done. I don't care anymore. You just dropped the fucking bomb on me, dude, because I didn't get that far. And I, from what I've seen so far, I enjoyed it. Like, I thought it was cool, and Linda Hamilton coming back was cool. But are you fucking kidding me? Are you telling me that the fucking <laughs> T-800 <laughs> in the beginning of the film that blows away John Connor drinking a fucking Mai Tai is feel sorry about it yeah yeah. that's fucking stupid who said that was okay uh our favorite uh character cigar chomping uh businessman p.s if they prevented everything in t2 why the fuck is a t800 arnold coming back and killing john connor in fucking guatemala that's another plot hole that's for another day joe because money because cigar chomping yes Mm -hmm. and that's terminator and i'm pretty sure in reality that franchise has also just had its last breath for a while because as i said before dark fate bombed continues to bomb and it's probably gonna fucking make i don't know if it'll kill the series but i'm sure it's gonna make the franchise lie dormant for a while there's a video game coming out but we'll see uh so connor i just i have i have a last Mm. question here for you so since you came from the future where is (laughs) connor of today i don't know (laughs) <laughs> are they at work? Are they about to walk in and have a, a mental breakdown sitting you, seeing you sit there at the computer recording this episode? <laughs> Probably stuffing cheese into its face uh, and playing Mortal Kombat 11. Okay. He's from the future next week. Yeah. I, I mean, are you going to go f- are, are you going to go full Daniel Baldwin? Are you going to get in a car and drive across country and disappear? I'm going to go recruit a bunch of like uh, Z-grade knockoff X-Men um, <laughs> and I'm going to go fight Malcolm McDowell. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure future connor yep i gotta go find my skin too because uh, i'm just i'm just bones now so that's it that's terminator salvation from 2009 directed by mick g hey everybody if you want some more bad movie goodness you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com subscribe to us anywhere you listen to your podcast and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums yeah and if you're on the social medias you can follow us at movie dumpster on instagram facebook and twitter I'm Joel Scola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Skeleton McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster.